Hello and welcome to News File. My name is Evans Mensah. At long last, the battle is set to begin. In the red, white, and blue corner, our NPP presidential candidate in the December 7 election, Nana Adodankwa Akufado. His vice, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and the chairman of the party, Jake Otanka Obechebelamte. In the black, red, white, and green corner is John Dramani Mahama. And in the red, gold, and green corner is Electoral Commission. Refereeing the bout will be an odd number of Supreme Court judges. They are being called upon to declare, one, that John Dramani Mahama, the second respondent, was not validly elected president of the Republic of Ghana. Second, that Nana Adodankwa Kufado, the first petitioner, rather was validly elected president of the Republic of Ghana. And all other consequential orders as this court, I'm talking about the Supreme Court, may see fit. At the pre bout press conference yesterday, the contenders in the red, white, and blue corner laid out their evidence before the world. Today on News File, we will examine details of that press conference and look at the MPP's grievance as presented to the public. Legitimate or much ado about nothing. Those in the red, white, black, and green corner also held a counter press conference. We will examine that also. When we return from this short commercial break, I will introduce my guest here in the studio. But News File always is brought to you by MTN and Bank of Africa. We'll return shortly. Thank you very much for staying with us here on News File. As I said, Mainly, we'll be looking at the NPP's petition before the Supreme Court, as captured in their press conference yesterday. They made their, public before, they made their case before the public yesterday, but subsequently, later on on News File, we'll also uh, look at the lobbying going on right now for the Speaker's position. There are three names already uh, making the rounds, I'm sure uh, you know by now. Doa Jaho, we've heard is in pole position to become the next Speaker of Parliament. Also, we've had Kendrasa, the name has been thrown out there, and Obeda Samwa also, uh, as I mentioned. There are also other lobbying going on right now. As far as the uh, various ministerial positions are concerned, once the president is uh, sworn in, he will have to form a cabinet, uh, announced a new list of ministers, and there are certain names already jostling for several positions. So we'll look at that also later on on News File. Let me now introduce my guest for today's show. I'm joined in the studio right now by uh, Abraham Amaleba. He's a member of the NDC uh, legal team. Uh, thank you very much sir, for joining us here on News thank File. You. I've also been joined in the studio by uh, Chris Akumi. He's a, ND I'm a member of the NDC legal team as well. Thank you very much, Akumi, for your time. Thank you. We are expecting shortly to join us in the studio. Nana Santibedeto is a legal practitioner. And we'll also be joined by uh, Kwabana Japan, is a member of the NPP. Uh, they'll join us in the studio uh, to look at the various issues I've put before you today. Okay, we'll start by getting some excerpts from what happened yesterday, the press conference by the New Patriotic Party, where they laid out their case before the public, before actually they had filed at the Supreme Court. Shortly after that, they addressed this press conference. Let's listen in, let's get a bit of what they said what they claim the evidence is, and then we'll come back and analyze. Let's start with uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. He started by laying out the evidence as the MPP has it. Um, there are many ways to steal a boat, just as there are many ways to kill a cat. So we were looking at the many ways that were implemented to steal this boat. Uh, in one way or the other. Now, if you look at the pink sheets, and, and I'm sure other evidence is going to come into order, but now we're just focusing on the pink sheets. If you look at the pink sheets, you'll be able to tell from the, to some to a large extent, from the from the information on the pink sheets whether there were there was overvoting. Overvoting will occur when. There are more votes in the ballot box than actually ballots issued to the voters at the polling stage. This is contained in a section called C1 of the pink sheet, 
where they indicate the total number of ballots issued to voters at the polling station. So if you count the vote, and at the end of the day, there are more ball ballots in the ballot box than there are that were issued to the voters in the uh, polling station, then you know there is a problem. And you know those results cannot stand. Section C3 of that also tells you about voting without biometric verification. It's a very easy way to steal votes if you allow people to come in without their biometric verification and actually vote. They, are, they may not be on the register at all. We, uh, uh, but we have a section, as I said, C3, which will tell which uh, many polling stations indicated the number of people uh, who were voting without such biometric verification in violation of the no verification, no vote principle. You also have a situation uh, where in several polling stations, the presiding officer has not signed the sheet. Uh, maybe he or she may be worried that they are part of an exercise they do not want to append their name to. But again, it questions the validity of those. What is very, also very interesting is that the pink sheets are, uh, is supposed to have a unique serial number. But interestingly, we found different polling stations with the same serial Now, how does that happen? How does that happen? Different polling stations, several, with exactly the same serial number. Uh, again, that question uh, the, the validity of, of these results. And then you have, uh, within these pink sheets, words and figures not matching, and therefore you cannot tell which is really being applied. Now, here, for example, is an example. Uh, it's, this is the same serial number, two separate polling uh, stations, two different results that are coming in. But you need uniqueness here. Uh, but this, this particular polling station is, 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 is clearly not. not right. So this is an example. This is also an example of overvoting. You have here on form, uh, on, on the pink sheet, under column C1, ballot, ballot issue, 277 ballots were issued to voters in this polling station. Now, the votes in total, at the end of the day, have come up to 291 for this polling station. Now, you know, the nature of the irregularities that we've discovered from polling station to polling station is that the, the, the irregularity is, is, is in small numbers. In, when you look at it. But when you add them up, across 26,000 polling stations, you will see that it's very huge. Uh, remember that in the last election, the difference that we needed for a first round victory was just 23,000. So one vote per polling station would have made that sure. difference. So this may look like a small number, but in aggregate, it is quite significant. You know, so there was really a lot of irregularity, but I think you can call it a very sophisticated irregularity. You know, that, that we, 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 we are seeing here. Now, you also have an example here, this is the C3, where they are telling you that in this polling station, 614 people voted without biometric identification. Now, this is actually where we have uh, from the C, uh, the pink sheet. There are a lot of instances that are going to be reported, that are being reported, and, and we, we, have, we will have the evidence of where many vote, voting took place in many places without biometric information uh, uh, verification, which was not necessarily captured on these pink sheets. That's a separate matter. But the law said no verification, no it is, it is that simple. You know, but we had a situation where suddenly um, verification machines were breaking down all over the place, even though they have never been used before. You know, so we, we, we created an environment for the use of these uh, non no verification, voting without verification. So in putting all of this together, 
Um, we cut, this is by category. How many books are we finding here? Over voting, now across all the 24,000 polling stations that we've looked at so far, over voting was 620,443. <laughs> Voting without verification was 456,933. Same serial number for different polling stations, 50,278. Missing signature on the pink sheet, 208,523. And words and figures don't match, 3,841. Now, in total, these votes amount to one million three hundred and forty thousand and eighty. That's yeah, so live here on Newsfile. We are live on Joy 99.7 FM, also live on the Multi TV channel, the news channel. You're watching us live uh, from our studios here. Uh, we've just been joined by Nana Santibedeto. He's a legal practitioner. And I'm allowed Nana to say that uh, he's a sympathizer of the MPP as well. Sure, why not? Great. Okay. So that sets the scene for our discussion here today. We'll be looking at the, that press conference you just listened to. Uh, the evidence as laid out by Dr. Mahmoud Balmia, the vice presidential candidate of the NPP in the just ended elections. Let me start with Mr. Chris Akumi. Convinced? Um, good morning to our curious listeners. And viewers. And viewers. Uh, I want to make a point of correction to start with. Mm. At the press conference yesterday, no evidence was laid bare or was put in the public domain. What was done by the MPP was to put up series of claims and allegations, you know. And series of claims and allegations do not constitute evidence per se. You understand it? Yeah, because to, for a fact to constitute an evidence, it might be supported. You understand it? And, you know, the position of the law is that when there's All a the facts and fa things fa yes, that yeah. they don't support the... The well, that is that, is that is that is one side of the case, you know. Not until you listen to the other party. The other party must be heard. That is the issue in this case, you know. Must be heard to find out whether those allegations put in the public domain can be supported. They are true or not. Then, when they are true, they become evident. But as of now, I mean, we cannot call them evident. They are allegations or claims or contentions by the MPP. So let me put that uh, issue on. And uh, I listened to Baumia, and uh, there is, he, he talked about overvoting. Okay. He also talked about uh, presiding officers not signing the blue sheets. He mentions same serial numbers from same police stations. 
and I talked about the disparity between you know, uh, a voting figure and actual number of people who actually voted. So you can see that in this vein, from his perspective or from the press conference, from his address, he was talking about irregularities. If you just oppose it to their claim or their position right from the beginning, the claim of rigging, the claim of rigging, you know that there's absolutely a very clear, distinct departure from the earlier position. You understand me? There's a clear, they are talking about irregularities now. And earlier on, you know, they were talking about fraud. You know, the election was fraudulent. I mean, now from the press conference and even the process which I may file, there has not been any claim of fraud in this document and in the press conference. So again, you see that it's just like, you know, an attempt at trying to hold on to a straw, you know, to, for, for, for a savior. I mean, which in one way or the other does not, will not hold. Now, I was surprised when... Th th that's a quick point. I'm coming. If, if you look at their petition, though, mm -hmm. the issues of, you know, connivance, fraud, etc. That, that is their claim. That is what they are alleging. You, no, understand but you, you, you just said that, if you look at their petition, they did not... They said that there had been a certain departure from what they had already put out. But yeah. it's also captured in, in what they put out yesterday. Well, what, what For example, it says, petitioners say that all of the irregularities and electoral malpractices captured above were nothing but a deliberate, well-calculated, and executed ploy or a contrivance on the part of the respondents with the ultimate objective of unlawfully assisting the first respondent, in this, in this case the president, to win the 22 December presidential election. That's, that is, that's clear. That is still... Assistant. That, that, is a, that, that is their case, you understand it. Now, when you are putting up a case. One expects that in a petition of this nature, as regulated by the provisions, you must support it with evidence, you understand, or particulars. So if you are talking about police stations which have uh, the same numbers and the rest, one expects you to mention this police station is at Anyako, Aboma, police station number so so so, you understand. But this kind of while allegation, you know, cannot constitute evidence, that's the point I'm saying. Not specific enough. No, 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 no. It's, it's just like, you know, going on a fishing expedition. <laughs> you understand it? I mean, it doesn't constitute evidence that there, was, uh, uh, there were police stations which returned the same number of uh, uh, numbers. And uh, What are the names of the police station? In which constituency? In which region? You understand it? I mean, then, you see, when you provide these particulars, which you call beta yeah. particulars, you understand, you are trying to even convince your listeners or whoever is adjudicating on the case that at least you have evidence to support it. But these are mere allegations. I mean, which even any boy or any child in the street, I mean, who is an MPP supporter, can even stand in a classroom in the street and shout out, this and this has been done, this and this has been done. But where is the evidence? This is why I'm saying that let nobody state, or let the non the public be deceived that there was any evidence put in the public domain yesterday. There was no such evidence. There were claims. There were claims made. And you see, Bahumia was uh, quoting from, uh, what do you call it, uh, ground three of the petition where he was he stated the the the, the, the particulars of uh, over voting now this is what he was quoting from he talked about aggregate of instances of voting due to the total number of as votes exceeding ballot papers issued to voters where is it Nashama? is it Kumasi? is it Tampa? Otamani? You see, this, the rule of the game is evidence. The rule of the game is evidence, you know. So when you are giving particulars, you have, given, you have provided the ground, you are giving particulars. The particulars might be so pertinent to support the ground that there was overvoting, 
so many ballot boxes were issued to the police station at Ashama, Ashama uh, EP, so so and so, but so so and so number of people voted. Then, I mean, the credibility of your case would sound better. But this kind of, you know, lumping of claim or assertions or allegations and the rest is not what we want at this time. You are alleging that there was massive rigging. And I was thinking that if they went to court, they were going to provide in the petition evidence of the massive rigging to support their claim. Now, let's look at, uh, you know, the other time, uh, I don't know whether my, very, my friend has got a, a copy of this, uh, the petition. Now, General Mosquito was stating or stated some time ago that uh, he sympathizes with the MPP because they have problem with arithmetic. You understand it? I mean, it's, I, I am not now convinced that it is true. Because if you look at this petition, hmm, look at this cursory glance, why they are even adding the total number, number of those cars. The total figure they have is 14,158,880. But if you add up their own figures, you can add it, this 5 million, five, that's 10 million, add all this. It came down to 10 million, 917, 332. And here they have stated 14 million, 158,882. Very simple addition. And is this what they are putting before the Supreme Court of Ghana? You see, there is a petition before the court. I, as a lawyer, wouldn't want to go into the merits of the petition. But I can point out the flaws in the petition. Now, let, let me also go on. What can occasion a petition of this nature? What can occasion a petition of this nature is stated very clearly in uh, Article 64 of our Constitution. You know, that is, if you think that, can I have it? Thank you very much. That is 64. Yes, Challenging election of president, you understand it? Yeah. Uh, the validity of the election of the president may be challenged only by a citizen who may present petition for the purpose to the Supreme Court within 21 days after the declaration of the result, in respect of which the petition is presented. A declaration by the Supreme Court that the election of the president is not valid. So we are this is the ground. You are going to court to, you know, to the Supreme to ask the Supreme to declare that the election is not valid, and therefore it should not stand as the election or the candidate elected has not been deemed to be the candidate under uh, the election. Okay, election held. Now, so once you expect that, when we are going to court you know, to put up a claim that the election is not valid. We expect you to put up, give particulars, provide particulars as to the invalidity of the election. But they have, haven't they? Do you understand? Because, because if you read some of the uh, details provided in the petition you read, for example, they say the total number of the total number of registered voters was fourteen million one hundred and fifty eight thousand eight hundred and ninety uh, registered voters. Now this number of registered voters so declared was however in excess of the official total of no number of registered voters of fourteen million uh, thirty one thousand six hundred and eighty which the second respondent, in this case the uh, Electoral Commission, had furnished the MPP between the 19th of November and the 2nd of December. The number has shot up by as much as 127,210 votes between well, the period well, when well, they were first given I, the register I have, uh, and after the I've elections. I have even demonstrated from what they have filed here that the claim that over 40 million people voted is not even correct. Adap John no. Germany had 500, 5 million, 574. No, that, that's a separate issue. I wanted to address yes. it because you, you made the point that they, they haven't provided any particulars. There's no evidence to back it. They're giving you a clear example mm -hmm. of where there's a disparity between the uh, total number of registered voters that were given by the Electoral Commission officially and what the what, total what, number was after the poll. What is the source of what? You see, when we are relying on 
documents. They claim I'm that two official that, documents I'm happy have two different word. figures. I'm, I'm happy you use the word claim. Have they stated the document, the folio number, or whatever document it is? You see, when people are talking from their heads, or talking from, you know, uh, uh, manufactured documents, you understand it. If people are referring to a document which are not, not in existence... Isn't that what they'll do in court? Exactly. When they get to court, then they'll provide those details as you ask it. If they provide the details... You know what happens in court? You provide the, det uh, the details in the form of a document. It becomes an exhibit. Now, you cannot just provide an exhibit and expect it to be accepted by the court. Now... The other party who is in the case will have a look at it and see whether there's an objection to be raised on it. There are certain issues which must be validly looked at. One, whether the document is coming from proper custody. You understand it? And I will tell you that, you see, the documents could be tendered hmm, in this case, can be from the parties, but when it comes to the issue of whether it comes from the proper custody. You know, the same document which have been signed is in the custody of the Electoral Commission. It's in the custody of the, uh, what do you call it, the, 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 the other polling agents and the polling officers and the parties representative. You can even see that there are va variations on the original document which is in the position of the electoral commissioner and which other party agents hold and what they are showing around. But why should there be variations? If we have this is why I'm saying that it is, that around. is why that, that you answer the question mm. means that that document, even in this instance or the instance we are talking about, cannot even be relied upon. That's why I'm talking about documents. But, but, but doesn't, me, but doesn't me, that go to challenge me. the validity of the election? Yeah, exactly. That one document exactly. uh, on which you're supposed to record figures, have different figures, but it's supposed to be the same document when the duplicated mother, for when everybody else. When the mother else. document has got the same figures, and which is in the custody of the electoral commissioner, and the same document in the custody of uh, maybe CPP polling agent has got the same figure, it corresponds with what the electoral commissioner had, what the NDC have, and only the MPP has got a different document with different figures. It raises an eyebrow. Okay. Uh, you understand it? Uh, well, it raises an eyebrow. Well, it's, let, it's, let, it's, let me, it's, let me, let me show you. Let me show you something. Thankfully, thankfully, we have uh, representatives of the NPP here who will deal with the issues. And I want to announce that uh, we've just been joined by uh, Mr. Kabila Japan, who is a member of the NPP. Thank you, sir, uh, for joining us. Uh, I, I want to, I want to bring in. I want to, I want to bring can, it. I want to bring can, it now. Can I with the document? I have, I have an illustration. We'll, we'll, we'll come me. back. We'll come back to the documents because this, this is a, a program that Thank dwells you. heavily. On, on the NPP's case okay. uh, as presented to the public yesterday. So we'll come back. So we'll hold on to the other documents. But I want to bring in Nana Santibide too. The charge is that really what you did yesterday was not providing us with any evidence at all. You were just basically making claims and allegations without substance, specificity, uh, uh, claims that were, were you, you didn't probably tell us the polling centers, the specific polling centers, the discrepancies. The charge is that, well, you're just throw, throwing some some issues out there without real solid evidence to back it. No, thank you, Evans. Uh, le, let me take this opportunity to um, say good morning to your listeners and your viewers. Um, I think the issue about evidence uh, is uh, uh, premature at this stage. Certainly, I don't think anybody was going to expect the MPP in their press conference yesterday to start laying out the evidence. Remember that the NPP has engaged in an exercise which has um, had them looking at over 24,000 polling station result sheets to get to the source document of the election. Um, several thousand of those will be tendered in court. So I don't think anybody is expecting uh, the NPP to but what they did yesterday was to give examples of the sort of things that they were talking about. And I think you all saw clearly, Dr. Baumia, showing red sheets and the sorts of um, issues that have been raised in the petition as examples. So I don't think uh, this is a problem. Certainly, uh, my good friend Chris knows that um, he's entitled, that is, 
um, if the, 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 I say he because uh, he's speaking a lot for the, end, uh, the EC at the moment. So, 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 but the EC is entitled, the EC is entitled to ask for further and better particulars if they believe that a certain pleading, a certain claim is for them not um, uh, clear enough so that they can properly answer. The rules provide for that. There's no difficulty there. But I think the, the petition is proper. There's nothing wrong with the petition at all. Uh, it conforms with um, the CI-74, which uh, um, is the, uh, the law governing, uh, the regulations governing the, the, uh, the, 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 the petition when you want to file to challenge the validity of the election of the president. I don't have any difficulty with that. Um, I think that, you know, uh, so far, I haven't heard anybody really addressing the, the core issues. And I think it is important that uh, we look at it. What uh, the NPP is saying is that, and, and you know, uh, my personal view, let me say this, my personal view is that the election, the conduct of the EC was abominable in this election. There is absolutely no question about it. There are some issues which I will not uh, bring forward because I am a member of the legal team uh, working for the MPP in this matter. And there are some legal issues, strategies, which I don't think is proper for me to discuss here. But I think that when we get to court, and everybody, that's a good thing, you know, everybody will have their day in court. MPP will, will have their day in court. The EC will be able to respond. Nobody is going to be, uh, as we say, uh, stampeded into um, uh, submission. Everybody will be able to tell their story. Uh, it is very interesting uh, what um, uh, my friend Chris's uh, last statement that um, uh, what if the, uh, well, he was, he's suggesting that the NPP may be using manufactured documents. And you rightly pointed out that how could that be? The document, the source document, is written, signed in, uh, how should we say, why do you say eight, eight copies? Uh, you go duplicate, triplicate, quadruplicate, quintuplicate, sextuplicate, whatever, in, 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 in carbon copies for each party to have a copy. It is, the law requires it. And so if a party has a copy, it is coming from proper custody. If I am challenging the EC and the EC has issued me a document, which by law they are entitled to do, and the EC comes and says, but my original document is different from the carbon copy of, of mine that you have. Mm? And Chris is saying that that is possible. And so it would, it would mean that the MPP has got a manufactured document. You know, there are other parties in this matter. It's not just the, the MPP. There's the PPP. There's the NDP. There's the CPP. There are other parties in this matter. And we will see whether the EC's document, and God forbid, the EC should now go and tamper with evidence. And now bring a document to show us, which is very different from everybody else's carbon copy. God forbid they should do that. But I wouldn't be surprised, because I'm saying that what I have seen on these red sheets, the kind of malpractices, irregularities that have occurred, suggest a deliberate pattern. You know, sometimes an irregularity is a one-off. Somebody made a mistake. After all, we're talking about thousands of polling stations, 26,002, I believe. People make mistakes. The levels of education of polling officers, electoral officers, are not always the same. And so people may make mistakes. But when you see a pattern, and all of the- a pattern? Of course. Why would we be going to court? <laughs> In all other common law countries where these sorts of issues have happened, one of the key things is, is when you, your ability to establish a pattern of people doing this. When you have a pattern, it's not a coincidence. It is not an ordinary mistake, OK? It is not a coincidence. It is not an ordinary mistake. Uh, and you believe that it's, uh, it's been done, uh, conspiracy between the and I'm not alleging any conspiracy. Because this it's part of the petition. You see, you see these, are loaded, that, which these are loaded. Which was put out there yesterday. Excuse me. Have conference. you seen the word conspiracy in the petition? Oh, well, conniv connivance is there. Well, connivance is not conspiracy. Well, conniving between the president and the, the, the presidency. Well, Evans, it is not conspiracy. Fair enough. But conspiracy is a legal term. But okay. the, the, in, essentially, you are suggesting that two oh, individuals, two parties, in this case, the Electoral Commission and the president or the, or, or the NDC, are working together to basically is that, is that what the petition says? Have you read the petition no, properly? I want to read that part again. You, you could go and I'll look for it and read that part again where it talks about... I, think, I, think it's even, about I don't think it's even material. The point I'm making right. is simply this. 
And let me state it clearly, mm. that the sum of the NPP's position is this, that the EC conducted itself in a manner in which they would be able to elect President John Mahama as president of the republic for the next term. That is deliberately. That, of, co well, of course it's deliberate. Of course it's deliberate. Okay? And you see, it's even more interesting. Again, I go back to Chris's point. When Chris here now suggests that somehow the EC has document different from everybody else's. <laughs> so I mean, that is that. I think the, I think, don't you said you may. You, you said they may. Don't, don't, you said they may. Don't, don't the EC will come and NDS, MPP would have manufactured documents. So the EC has documents that are different. We will see. Uh, now, uh, on the issue of the, the figure, the totals, uh, mm. you know, that he was it talking says about. It doesn't matter. It's, it's true. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it's a typographical error. Oh. You oh. see that the... But that's huge. Between no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. If you read the entire petition, there's a, that figure, 14 million, 158,000 and 890, runs through the petition. You yourself referred to it just yeah. a minute ago. That was the figure that the Electoral Commission announced as the number of registered voters on the day he announced the results, okay? So it runs through the document, and I think in, in sometimes this, um, uh, when you're doing <laughs> I, charts and I so did, on, so when you're doing charts and so on, uh, it, it is a clear, it's a clear mistake, because clearly, if you look at all the results, the total number of valid votes, and these are referring to the total number of valid votes, could not have exceeded, could not have gotten to the total number of registered voters, okay? So that one is just, it's just a, a typo that can be uh, corrected. I don't think that's a big enough. But, but beca because it's also going to be subject of a legal battle, that is a, isn't it a can be corrected. substantial. Evans, it can be corrected. Mm. It is not the end I, of the world. I, I understand from what we heard yesterday that it's already before the Supreme Court. It doesn't matter. It can be corrected. Chris knows this. So <laughs> it's not a big deal. We go to court, yeah, we tell the court that, my lord, this right. paragraph, there is a mistake. It should have read that, this. That, can we correct it? We all correct it. No different. You, no you. difficulty. He, he knows that. But I know the. You see, these are all. These are all. These are all. Red we'll come back. We'll come back. These I want are, to make notes. Yeah. You see, this is, the, this is the difficulty that somebody who has not been sued, when they are speaking for people who have been sued, this is the difficulty they find themselves in. Okay? Uh, because you see, these are all red herrings. The question is if you look at the evidence uh, or which we are talking about, the, the source material, are the irregularities and malpractices that we are talking about present or not? One. Two, do those irregularities and malpractices affect substantially the result of the election? Those are the questions. And your answer to those? Yes and yes. Because again, if you look at other jurisdictions that have dealt with these election petitions, those are the two foundational questions. Whether there was irregularities, non-compliance with the law, or malpractices. If they do, if they are, have they affected the outcome of the election? Those are the two questions. But, but as to whether somebody didn't put the right figure here or something. Yeah, but but, but no, no, okay. the, the question to ask really is, how do you then determine that those irregularities yes. had led to a situation where you lost elections and the other pa party won? In other words, the irregularities took votes from you, which you should have had. How do you come to that conclusion? We heard that yesterday, that if you correct the irregularities, now those should have been declared the yes, president. Yes, precisely. How, how do you, how do you how come do you to get that, that conclusion? I'll tell you. But it's in the petition. If you, well, I'll tell you. It's simple. We're saying that these sorts of irregularities are such that there are 1.340 million votes that ought not to be part of this election. And that could be anybody's vote. Could be anybody's vote. Yeah. Now, if you take those out, which the courts ought to do. If you take it out, you now have a base figure of valid votes. Then we look at what everybody has. And if you look at what everybody has, and you do the uh, uh, analysis, uh, the person who crosses 50% of the votes is the Nadu Dan Kwekufar. First how, of all, how let, let me also that say... Conclusion? That's pretty difficult. Let me, let me, let me try to uh, understand it. it. Okay, let me put it this way. You yeah. have... Um, let's say you have 10,995,262 supposed valid votes. Yeah. We now know that 1,342,845 of that are invalid votes. Oh. So they are not, this is what we will prove. Chris, please, I beg that, you. That is the I beg you. That Let is me the just, you know, the court, so yeah, let's just. You can make the, <coughs> make yeah, the notes you, when we come, you, when we come around again. Just to support you and just a little help on that.
if you look at the petition, there's a part of the petition that we deliberately did not put out, but it's in the court. It's very clear, those 1.342 million votes, how they have been assigned and how it affects each of the eight candidates. It's clear. It's here. And okay. so my question is, yeah. how do you determine that? This is it. Knowing, yeah. knowing that one million, based on your claim, are votes that have been you know, put there and because maybe you are invalid because of the irregularities. That's what how I'm do saying. you then determine listen, listen, which listen. vote goes to which party? Because every polling station has the result. Has the result. So, Evans, let's say um, Joy FM polling station shed one polling station. There, Mr. John Dramani Mahama had 500 votes. Mr. Um, Herbert, Dr. Herbert Latte had 12 votes. Mm. Papa Kwesin Doom had 130 votes. Nana Abidan Kweku had 200 votes, and so on and so forth. If you are taking the votes from that polling station out, you now deduct the 500 from John Mahama's total, the 200 from Nana Akufuado's total, the 192 from uh, 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 Indum's total. That is how it goes, because you cannot count the votes from that polling station. So what about uh, polling centers, as we heard yesterday, mm -hmm. where they had overvoting? That again, example. again, if you have, well, the, the point is that where you have overvoting, mm, there are, let's say, 600 registered voters. Suddenly, the votes amount to 800. Yeah. Clearly, those are, that's an, you have to annul the results from that station. So everybody else loses. Exactly, that's the point. That. So when you do that, we now start with a bank of, uh, for example, as announced, Mr. John Dramani Mahama having 5.574 million votes, Nana Dudanko Kufuado having 5.248 million votes, Papa Kwesindum having 64,000. As you annul the polling stations, the votes each got from those stations gets subtracted from what is announced. Okay? At the end of the day, you'll have the true valid votes. And there you will find out if Nane Kufado has 4.8 million and John Dramani Mahamas has 4.2 million, you will know who crossed the 50% line. Another point too worth noting is that if you look at these irregularities, they occurred 99% of the time in uh, Mr. John Dramani Mahama's stronghold. 99 percent <laughs> yeah. of the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Strongholds, yes. people don't vote for others. Yes. <laughs> you see, they, they, they occurred in those places. You see, people will want to make this black and white issue. Evans, I assure you, it is not a black and white issue. And yeah. somebody says, and so people don't vote for other people. And so, no! It is not a simple thing of, you know, um, <laughs> we, we're just going to load Mahama and so on and so on. No. For example, I, I'll tell you another thing. You know what we've also discovered? Mm. There was a deliberate attempt, and indeed it succeeded in, in large measure, to increase rejected votes. Okay? There were places where, if you look at the statement of poll on the, on the red sheet, and you look at the results, there ought not to be any rejected votes. But somehow, on the rejected votes column, rejected votes are put there. Now, if you have 10 rejected votes for each constituency, uh, for each uh, polling station, that is 260,000 votes. And assuming if you that recall, all if you those recall, belong to the Nado No, 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 no. It doesn't belong to anybody. Listen to me very carefully. Mm. I'm not saying it belongs to anybody. Mm. If you recall, right after the election, one of the big things that were being lamented was the fact that we've even gone higher in rejected votes since 2008. Well, I think 2008 was 203,000 rejected votes. Now we have 251,000 rejected votes, OK? What that does is that, you see, you start the election by saying that the people who voted Officially, 11,246,982 voted. But the Constitution says the person who gets more than 50% of the valid votes cast. So out of the 11 point something, 2 million, you've got to take out the invalid votes. Then you get the valid votes cast. Rejected ballots are invalid votes. So when you take that, those off, then you get to the valid votes of 10,995,262. In other words, the more you increase rejected ballots, the, the, the more you decrease valid votes cast, and the easier it is for somebody to cross 50%. You see, these are not, it is, as I keep telling you, it is not some black and white simple obvious thing. Otherwise, nobody would do it. Who would do an obvious thing that you can easily catch? No. It is very subtle, very sophisticated, and it has happened. And when we get to the Supreme Court, one by one by one, yeah. it will be proven. Mm. Mm. Mr. Maliba, convinced? Yes, yes. What Mr. Alba is saying, good yeah, Luckily, I don't have to listeners. convince Mr. Maliba or my friend Chris. <laughs> it is the Supreme Court that I have to convince. Thank the Lord.
Yeah, so, so what was the need for the so, press conference yesterday? Excuse me. No, we'll, we'll come to that. No, it's, it's, an issue, it's, an, need, it's an issue I want to address. It doesn't need to come independently. Can I, can I no, answer that? No, no, I'll, I'll, no, I'll answer I'll, that. No, 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 there are three truths in court. There's a plaintiff's truth, in this case the petitioners. There's a defendant's truth, in this case the respondents. And the, the, there's a judge's truth, which holds sway. And so the press conference by the MPP yesterday, for me, was clearly their side of the story. But they sought to whip up sentiments and that's how I saw the press conference. You could hear some of the um, uh, boos and whatever coming from the uh, press conference. They sought to whip up sentiments <coughs> among the uh, rank and file, as if to say that what they are presenting in court is the gospel truth, and that when they go to court, they are just going to walk through the court like hot knife going through butter. But you see, the press conference for me did not disclose anything at all. I expected the press conference yesterday to have supported their claim of Reagan. This I didn't see. I didn't see that at all. I saw a press conference that sought to catalog administrative inefficiencies in our electoral processes. And this does not call for legal intervention. These are policy matters. Well, I see. These are purely policy matters. Even when those so-called administrative inefficiencies affect the integrity of the poll and possibly its outcome, you still think that that's the challenge. Address? That's the challenge that they will have to cross, and that's why I'm saying that they should have made it clear at their press conference to moderate the expectation of their followers. They would have to prove. They are legend. So we've not gotten there yet. But purely, these are administrative challenges and administrative inefficiencies within the electoral process. Alleged. Alleged, if they are even alleged. <laughs> so for me, to then come out and say that there's a grand scheme, what are some of the words they are using? There is a calculated or there's a systematic attempt to rig the elections. And the elections have been rigged with the active connivance of the NDC, for me, is begging the question. Uh, let, me, this, let, me ask, this, let me ask this, a small question just before we move on, just, just for my education. You say administrative inefficiencies. For <laughs> polling centers where we had yesterday, you had over voting. You know registered voters say 20. So total votes, including those rejected, should come to 20. Yes. Yet you have 25. Yes. The extra five, that also administrative? Where did that come from? No. And don't forget that. That is the this, this, Don't forget that. I mean, that. Yeah, of course. Yes. But yes. you're addressing, yes. addressing the press conference. Yes. I don't, yes. So, I, don't, so I, want, yes. I wanted to address that. Yes. Because, address because it put everything I'll down address, to administrative. I'll address that. <laughs> and I'll is address that also that. one of those? I'll address that. If you have a party agent from the MPP, that will still see that and sign off. On what basis are you going to hold, say, the president for that? <laughs> Secondly, we have just been told, it has been demonstrated here, that simple calculations, they've had it wrong. On what basis are we going to believe that there are, there are excess votes far above what was supposed to be on the register? So that is their story. And I've just indicated to you that there are three truths. <laughs> so that is their truth. And leave it at that. You see? In this press conference, they went on to talk about the law which says that no verification, no vote. Mm. And they failed to indicate to us that law. OK, they mentioned it. Mm. Regulation 32 of CI 70. It's right here. Mm -hmm. 32. It's, right, it's right here. It's right here. Wait, I'm, uh, no, I'm going to Regulation 32 of CI 70. It's in fact, it. it's in black. I'm going to address it. It's so bold. It's, it's so been boldened. Yes. It's so important. Yes. The word says shall. 
Yes. There is no. no. You, 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 you might. You, I can you read it. Mind if you read it. Let's read it. The voter it. shall go through a biometric verification process. Shall. And it is emboldened on the page. Yes. Let, let, yeah. let me use it for you. Now, under our laws, the laws regarding our elections, and this has been proven in Apalu versus the EC, Ten Ade versus the EC, the laws regulating our elections must be interpreted in such a way as to enhance the electoral process as well as the democratic process, and also guaranteeing and upholding the citizen's right to vote. Mm. You get the point. And he knows that. He knows what I'm talking about. Now, this provision cannot be used to deny a citizen from voting. That is your claim. Just like that has been your claim all over till we came here. That is your claim. That has been your claim. <laughs> oh, no. In fact, you, your claim started long ago up to a press conference and to now. So that is your claim too. Point it is, is it this. Is not. It is not the Supreme Court has power to strike down any law that seeks to, oh. as it were, <laughs> impede, so now we'll impede, down. <laughs> impede but I, I, an individual's or a citizen's right to vote. This verification and how do is you know not, a citizen? once again, this verification is not identification. Identification has gone past. Verification is simply to validate and to ensure that this person is the one who is voting. So you cannot deny a person who has been identified through the process, through a card, through picture album. How do you know that? Through, <laughs> through, through all these things that he has been identified. You cannot deny that person a vote just because he has not been verified. But that's what the law says. Right. No. No. And I'm saying that this law takes away a person's right to vote. Right. In other words, you're saying and it's inconsistent, with, it's inconsistent with, the, with, the with the right yes. to vote. That is it. Apalu and Tenade. The, the, the case is here. You can have a look at it. So for me, the press conference yesterday did not disclose any course of action. And I was wondering, Nanesa Asandibedi, a learned colleague of mine, senior of mine, I was wondering whether they averted their mind to Article 57, 5, and what, and what effect it will have on, you know, including 57, 5, by, by citing the president as the first respondent. And 57.5 is very clear. <coughs> says what exactly? It, is, it provides. Okay, let me read it. Yes. Me read. It says quickly, quickly, just for the sake of uh, those of us who haven't been to law school. Uh, it says, the president shall not, while in office as president, as president, be personally liable to any civil or criminal proceedings in court. And your point is? So that petition, was it? A civil action being brought against the president or not? So I was wondering what they were seeking to achieve by including the president. Let's even assume there's another argument they put forward, and I've heard them say that they are bringing in the president not in his capacity as, as a president, but as a, a candidate elect. But nonetheless, it does not take away from the fact that he still remains the president. So even if you were, if, if, if you were suing him as candidate Mahama, it doesn't take away the fact that he's still the president. Why? What? The, the, the mischief that was sought to be cured by this constitutional provision was to ensure that the president is not distracted. You, you get a point. So that you don't sue the president, and the president will have to be attending court. And that's why the provision indicated that he cannot be personally liable to any civil action. 
But I'm also told that, uh, according to the uh, rules of court, and the, the new Supreme Court rules, yeah. etc., or whatever Reba, it is. Reba, even where uh, you read, uh, go uh, up, uh, just go up a bit. Where you read, where you read, mm. just go up a bit. There's an attempt being made to present uh, the position that the president can never be sued. That is false. Okay. The president is subject to the prerogative writs, the one that compel him to do his duty under the Constitution. So you can bring a writ of mandamus against the president. That the Constitution says he no, must do me, A, B, me, or C. No, but obviously this is not a rate of mandate. Yeah. No, I'm saying, wait, wait, I'm coming. First of all, you eliminate this notion that the president can never be sued. That is false. Indeed. You can, even wait, there. Right, let me, let me even there, it's my time. Wait, even no, there. I, I want you to make the note. There. We'll come back to that point. Even the, that there, I can point, address substantively. it. Substantively. Even okay. there. Now, kindly make the notes of that. No, even there. Even there. If you sue the president there, the nominal person who appears in court, it's not the president. But my question really is that Attorney General, he knows but, that. But my question really is, is that according General? to the rules of is court, the 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 according to the not rules addressing of court, is that Attorney General, general. My the question. president, <laughs> the import of this law is to ensure that the you, president don't never goes to court. you don't distract <laughs> the attention of the president. Okay. And so who goes to court in that instant case? But, He's talking about four. But my, question, my question really, in this particular case mm -hmm. that is going to be, uh, the Supreme Court will have to decide on, according to the rules of court, in my understanding, you need to cite uh, the person whose election is challenged by the petition. Mm. And in this case, it's John Dramani Mahama. Evans, I'm talking about constitution, you're talking about a lesser law. What is this? That, law, that law you're talking about is a mere paper when it comes to this. Don't so so again, that. you're making the point that it's inconsistent, that, that rule of the court yes, is inconsistent am, with the constitution. Am, That's for the I Supreme speaking, Court to determine. I am speaking, <laughs> I don't I am know what speaking he's talking about <laughs> constitution. <laughs> I'm not speaking about a lesser regulation. The people which regulation does not have the capacity to stand toe to toe with the constitution. Indeed, when that law you are mentioning stands toe to toe with the constitution, it will fall like a pack of cats. You get the point. That is your view. So, <laughs> point is this: one will want to find out mm. what is the purpose for that. Let's even assume that you have seen her as a candidate in their petition here. It does not disclose that the president has done anything directly or indirectly to rig the elections as they are claiming. There's nothing to show here. Not There's nothing to show that not the president correct. has, as it were, connived actively or indirectly with the EC to reach that result that they are disputing. Well, I read that part earlier, and I want to read it again, because that's, that's the, those are the words of the NPP as captured in the petition. The petitioners say that all of the irregularities and electoral malpractices captured above were nothing but a deliberate work calculated and executed ploy or a contrivance on the part of the respondents with the, that's the EC and the president, mm -hmm. with the ultimate objective, object of unlawfully assisting the first respondent, mm -hmm. that is the president, mm -hmm. to win the 22 of December presidential elections. Yes. So clearly, yes. Yes, you're stating Yes. That all that was, yes. was done deliberately. And I will go back to it was a ploy. Point. It was a ploy. I will go back to Chris Akumu's point. Because this is, this, is this, is on, this is with affidavit. Mm. This, and, 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 and he knows that once you are coming by an affidavit, you must state your grounds. On the, it's like an oral, it's a written submission. What you have, you have said orally is what you have put down in paper. Mm. By just making an omnibus statement, that I connive with you does not suffice the requirement of an affidavit. You must show how I actively connive with you. That well, was absent. Well, to be fair, I've not pointed out that yeah, I, I That read is it. absent. Yeah, no. They didn't use the word <laughs> connived. They use ploy, uh, contrive. So they should. And I know in the, in, the, in the world of you know legality, yes. these words can mean a lot. Yes. So they should tell us how the president. Support in this affidavit or this uh, petition, how the president acted actively or even indirectly to reach the results that they are contesting. Why? In that case, if you are talking about that lesser law I'm saying that cannot stand the constitution, that you need to, uh, as it were, uh, cite the person who took part in the election. Is that not what you're saying? Is that what yeah. I'm saying? And that's the basis upon which President Mama yeah. has been cited. Why? Was he the only one? 
no, no, no. It, it, it doesn't say where, that. Sorry. Where, if, where, that, if that's what you're saying, it doesn't say where, that. It says, where is where is uh, 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 no, he doesn't say that. Where is it? Is it, is who's, it who's whose election? Is it is being who, challenged? The person whose election is, the person whose is, being, election challenged is being challenged by the petition. Yes. And so, in this case, so, it's, so, it's, so, it's, 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 it's yes. John Mahama. But I've dealt with that. It just I'm, happens I'm to be the president I've well. dealt with that. And I'm saying that mm. that provision goes contrary to this constitution. Mm, you'll see. So I think <laughs> that there are much bigger issues. My problem has to do with the fact that the MPP has whipped its supporters into frenzy. To the extent that they are believing, and when you ask any MPP person on the street, they are believing that once they go to court, their verdict, the verdict is going to be on their side. Mm. Now, it's the same thing they did before the elections. When they made their supporters believe that they were winning the elections, and when the elections went the other way around, you saw the mayhem, the mm. chaos, the stabbing of people. Which was done on by an road. NDC man on an, uh, you get an NDC man so and an MPP man. They should, the be, they should be telling their supporters that when you Let's go to have court, a discussion. when you go to court, mm. you are likely to win or to lose. And that you do not just go to court and put out your case and think that your case is the gospel truth. This must be told. And this is what the MPP has failed to indicate to their support. Okay, I want to bring in uh, Mr. Mm. Japon now. And mm -hmm. I'll just start off with a question so that I know there are a lot of issues we want to deal with. But uh, quoting from Nanado's uh, statement yesterday, he says uh, here that we have now put our case before the court. We leave it for the court to judge the merits. Some may ask, based on what he said, that why then do you hold the press conference? And if you believe that the court is going to do uh, the job, essentially, why do you put your case before the public then? And, and try and tell us that you have evidence. So I want you to listen. And I mean, that, that case was made quite strongly. Um, Why not just leave it to the court? Uh, I am, before I answer that, I'm totally surprised by the learned friends. They are lawyers. We did not go to law school. And they know that this is not the forum for you to present your evidence. They know that. Mm -hmm. So those questions should not be asked to start with in the first place. And in, yesterday, what Dr. Bamiya did was to just show just a bit of it. And... Please, the source document that we are talking about is a, is a duplicate from the EC. Unless Chris and his friend have seen what the EC has. <laughs> Maybe they have seen it, we don't know. And until the court calls the EC to bring their 26,000 and we put it side by side and that they can determine a difference, it's, it's, it's very curious for Chris to say that Maybe the EC and the NDC have a different document. It's supposed to be a duplicate, for Christ's sake. You know, the original is with the EC. You know, this whole election, frankly, I'm, I'm surprised at the posture of the NDC, because the NPP has not attacked the NDC per se. And I think, as a nation, we have to begin to look at the conduct of the Electoral Commission. You know, when this result was declared, it was signed by the hand of who? If it had been signed by somebody, would that have been accepted? I guess. I'm course. just asking. No, or what, whether it. if it wasn't signed, would that have been accepted? To be invalid, I guess. Invalid. So if we say missing president, presiding officer signature on red sheets, the law that I'm holding here says that at each polling station, the presiding officer has to publicly declare, and that declaration means he has to sign. And in fact, make a public attachment for people to come and see. Something they did not do. I think I've said it on another radio station also. So if we are saying that we are not accepting those 208,000 votes, it doesn't matter whether all went to Nanado or Mahama. The fact is, we are standing on firm ground. Because today we are talking about the election because of the signature of Dr. Afarijan. Yes, indeed. By the same argument, his official at the polling center, if he doesn't validate that report, that poll result, it does not become a, a result that should be counted. So it should be taken out. Again, my good friend here sits and talks about the fact that this law is flawed. It, he says it's inconsistent with the Well, is he now in the Supreme Court? Is he the Supreme Court? Is he the Supreme Court? Is he the Supreme Court? The fact is, the law says shall. You shall. Look, in my own polling station in East Legon. Three women spent over two hours struggling to get their, their fingerprints verified. 
By the time I was leaving, it was it hadn't been verified. Two had left and gone. What what is their situation? They can't vote, but other people. But should other be able people to vote. should vote, <laughs> and four hundred and fifty-six thousand without verification. That is a law. So clearly, this is also an invalid vote. I mean, really. I mean, we are talking about laws and nothing else. I mean, if you create different polling stations, and I've seen some of the red sheets, analyze some of it. Amazing. I can tell you, it's amazing. Ghost stations. You see three sheets, <laughs> same number, same number, even same result, but added to the tally to get the easiest position. In the presence of your agents. So what? That, I'll, I'll come to <laughs> that. Ah, that, talk, <laughs> that talk is as pure as I mean, we can go. So it's a separate that, topic that, I want us no, no, to. No, no. I'll, 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 I'll come, I'll I'll come to that. See, first, and foremost, first and foremost, <laughs> oh, Chris, the Chris, Electoral Chris, Commission Chris, that one, has been given <laughs> a constitutional <laughs> duty. It is their work. Whether you have an agent or not, they are supposed to report the people's will. This talk that, oh, a crime has been committed, and once you're... Yeah, you're, 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 you're a watchman. come back to that. I'll, I'll let everybody have their say on that I think particular as, as a serious, question. As a serious nation, yeah. we should be able to trust the Electoral Commission such that there will be no agents. Agent. Yes. That is the role of the Electoral Commission. You cannot have a football game when there is no referee and expect the GFA to accept the result of that game. They are not the result. And so, therefore, the areas where there was no presiding officer, we cannot accept that that result should be counted. It's invalid. But again, we have just put our case to the court. So. You know, and it's important <laughs> that we explain to the people of Ghana that we are not just doing this out of doing its sake. But this materially affects the evidence. You see, the thing that I said that we did not put out publicly, which I didn't want to put out publicly because the official team did not put out publicly. If you see the amount of vote out of the 1.3 million that has been allocated <laughs> to uh, John Mahama, John Mahama. Oh. then you see that he's the main beneficiary of the irregularities. That is a fact. <laughs> that is the fact for the court to decide. If you took that one out and invalidated all those votes, including those for Indum and Nanado and everybody, Nanado would have won by a first round. So that is a serious matter. It's not if we did all this and still John won, then then, the then though, there's no point. In fact, come here, let me help you there. In, in, in two oh seven, in two oh seven, General Buhari sued in the elections in Nigeria. Uh, I believe the candidate was um, Yaradwa and um, uh, uh, Good Luck Jonathan were the respondents together with the EC of Nigeria. The, the, the court in Nigeria found that General Buhari had actually established his claim of irregularities, malpractices, and the like. Unfortunately, the second leg, which I was talking about, whether it substantially affected the election, they found that it hadn't. Because the gap between Buhari and Yaradwa was about 12 or uh, 10, uh, 10 no, million. No, in fact, it was, it was almost 20 million votes. Because Yaradwa got 24 million, and Buhari got 2 point something million. So they, they, they could not. Uh, uh, really, but in this election, look at the number of uh, votes cons concerned with the irregularities, and look at the the the, the gap between that the two leading claim, the two the two leading con contestants. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, but I will come back yeah. to my question. Though yeah. I, I didn't think so I, I get I, an I answer. Think, but think, that no, your press conference was necessary. I think it's, I think it's important for the whole world and everybody. Yeah. everybody's been waiting for it. That the basis on which we are <laughs> making our case, and and it's been categorized here. And I've told you from one, if you take the issue of the precise officer's signature, it's akin to that of Afarijan's If I asked for Afarijan. You know, so that is a solid point. If Afarijan did not declare this or sign this, it will not be law. And nobody will be discussing it today. So by the same token, if we find that there is no signature of the presiding officer, then it has to be discounted. So that is one leg. We need to make that point to the whole world that we are reasonable people. But oh, we've lost by smaller margins and have accepted the results. Yes. You did not accept. It. Okay. You, were, you headed okay. to court on Sunday. Didn't Please. You, you, did you, not you see, this, you, you can know, make those. You see, as a lawyer, you, you shouldn't know. be saying this. You were there on Sunday. And today, we'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. This is it. You can go to court on a Sunday. You were there on Sunday. You can go to court on a Sunday. You can go to court on a Sunday. Let the people, I want the people. As a lawyer, you shouldn't be saying that. I want the people of this country to know that there's a law of the Electoral Commission. It's not MPP's law. It's the law of the Electoral Commission. And uh, the law that's binding all of us. And it says very clearly 
a voter shall go through biometric. You cannot come and sit here and say that this is sub. <laughs> it's I see. That Please, provision, no, 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 I'm, I'm making to, a I point. I want you to make a note. Yes, because um, we'll because, come back. Because then, let's allow the issues. Supreme Court to determine. That is all. The constitutionality of it. At least we are going story. by the law that we know. So if you allowed 456,000, oh, close to 460,000 people true. to vote, I mean, hold on, hold on. Why? Uh, Please, uh, that, those are the claims. And I want, I want it to be clear to you. You said something when I was coming that we saw. didn't produce any evidence. From Dr. Dr. Baumia made it very you clear. Your claim, which I, I want you to make the fabrication. note. I want to make the note so when it gets your turn, you can address that. It's from the sheets. It is not mere fabrication. We have over 24,000 red sheets, which are duplicates. Please, they are not the creation of the MPP. And okay. I do believe the no, NDC. I do believe the NDC we'll has We'll come back to that. Those we'll come back to that. Don't worry. They should bring once you get yeah, to yeah, can address it. Well, well, allow me to just point to the point. So, that's no, exactly what the I point think you're being unfair to him because uh, when, you when, are, when you are making your point, you are a senior nobody colleague, and I think we should show civility to our viewers. Mr. Bonkindly, kindly proceed. So, I think it's absolutely vital that the legs on which this petition is standing on these are solid foundations, and we the party has a case that we believe that. Uh, the, the Supreme Court will take a critical look for the future of our country. We don't want to have impudence in this country, that people can go and form a queue, spend time, and then their votes won't count the way it shouldn't or it should. You know, so that one is a solid case. The issue about the ghost stations, serial numbers from different polling stations, that is a fact. And all those sheets are there. Whether he expected us to bring it to Aliza Hotel <laughs> so that he would send his staff to come and seize it, we wouldn't do that. But you could have mentioned. We, well, he showed one or two. No, was a, we were the six hour press conference. But to be fair, he, yeah. he, even in those examples, he didn't tell us the polling centers. Oh, know. it is there. You can read it. Oh, oh, it's there. Oh, oh, it's oh, you can read it. It's it's there. There. I mean, for, for me, listening well, on radio, for example, do you want me to, yesterday. I can print it out here. For me, you can read it. Listening on radio yesterday, you, you I, can, I, was, I was expecting to hear it, the specific No, no, no. We deliberately did so not to be specific. No, but if the thing is, those watching TV can see the name. No, you can see it. You can see it. You can see it. It's there. I mean, so if you're not having In this presentation, there. Ever, 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 ever there. It's, it's there. You it's can there. see the it. Name is here. The, the station name is number is there. It's there. Please. <laughs> the name is why, there. Why are we trying to make it look like this is some cockamamie small boys game that's going on yeah. here? It's a very and serious matter. It's all a red herring. <laughs> My brother. You know, they are looking <laughs> at finding a way to create a distraction. This is the not NDC a, has serious matter. the same duplicates. They should bring it. The Electoral Commission should have the original. That is it. So we expect that. So I want to I I take so a short please. break. I want to yeah. take a short break. Then we take a break. When we return, we'll deal with the other issues. I'll get the other um, uh, panelists take on this issue about the president cannot be sued, can be sued, uh, the uh, article well, that uh, was cited. We'll look at that. We'll also examine the other issues about whether the press conference today was uh, relevant. And, uh, um, Mr. Japan had had his say on that. We're going to take all the others. And also, I'm sure I've seen other documents that have been banned about. And uh, Mr. Chris Akumi has a couple he wants to share with us. And we'll see what it contains. We'll return, we'll return from this break shortly. You're listening to News 5. Stay with us. We'll return shortly. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying with us here on News Far. You are listening to us on Joy 99.7 FM. You're watching us here on the Multi TV channel, the news channel on Multi TV. Uh, we're still discussing the NPP's case that will shortly uh, commence before the Supreme Court. There was a press conference yesterday. Of course, we can't discuss the merits of their petition because obviously it's before the Supreme Court. But we can discuss the press conference as they themselves articulated the issues yesterday. Later, we'll ask the bigger question, I believe. What does this all mean for our democracy? And what should be the posture of the other democratic actors towards the court case? I'm talking about the other political parties, the EC, the executive. Should they see this as an opportunity to enhance our 20-year-old democracy? Or much ado about nothing, we should forget about it. the NPP's crying war when there's none. OK, we'll look at that later on. But I want to bring in now uh, Chris Akume. He's been making a lot of notes, uh, has mm -hmm. a lot of reactions to what has been said earlier. Uh, what, what point do you want, really want to make? I see you having one document that you really want to, want to put out. Yeah, was, that, was that part of the press conference? Even, you know, we just come out of a very tense political uh, atmosphere, which has been created largely by the attitude of the MPP and their supporters. Where you have seen three days of a massive gathering at our brass board 
which people thought has been mistaken for the Supreme Court because I mean, the avenue for challenge to an election is the Supreme Court, not a brass spot, but you've seen that. <coughs> then there was one other at Kumasi, which was a massive demonstration. Uh, so they said, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, like somebody jokingly said, it, it was also the Supreme Court moved to Kumasi, but it did not sit because the Chief Justice, this time in the person of the Santini, was not present because you remember he refused. He was alleged to have refused to accept the petition. That's a lie. So mm. well, all those things. It's a lie. That, it's, it's I mean, it's, and that's a, it's it was a lie. alleged Rumor. to have refused to accept the petition. Mm. So you see, there have been this kind of, you know, uh, behavior, which I mean, is totally at variance with what the constitution or what the laws expect us to do when we want to pose a challenge. But ultimately, to they've the gone result. to court. That's what the constitution they've said they should do. They've gone to court yeah. yesterday, and the issue is that. That nothing stops them from going to court. And they went to court. We are talking about the press conference. Hmm. Was it necessary? There's was it? I thought it is absolutely unnecessary. If it was a way of just whipping up hope, false hope among their followership, then, I mean, they, they are living in a state of, uh, no, are driving their followership into a state of, Sub delusion. But folks which in the NBC have said that. Which is very dangerous. The NPP did not it, have it, any it, evidence. It, 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 it looked to me, it looked to me maybe it like it was a kind of, a, you know, a comic relief, you know, to reduce the political atmosphere of attention. That's the way I look at it. Now, we want to be very careful so that we don't go into the petition because the matter is before court. Mm. But if you remember, Bahomia illustrated certain aspects of their challenge in terms of uh, overvoting. Mm. And this is exactly what we saw on the screen. Mm. It is captured in page, uh, on page eight of the petition. Now, if you look at this, the issue is, has got to do with overvoting, overvoting, overvoting. Overvoting at where? In my bedroom or yours? To overvote, if there's any overvoting, it might be done at the police stations. They mentioned one polling I'm station. I'm coming. I'm coming. For example, Listen, just to illustrate the I'm, point. I'm, I'm making a point. If there is overvoting, as they claim, this is the basis of their whole petition That's that they have been overvoting, which uh, produce uh, what they call it, one million three hundred and forty-two. It goes on. That's I don't trust. I, I, I don't trust the them. Basis. Just, please no, don't, don't, don't because don't they clearly cite three. I don't trust them with the addition, but different graphs. Let's accept that they have. You know, they have problem with arithmetic. But let's accept that this is oh, the grand total. From mathematics one, one million three hundred forty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you read this, one, the aggregate of instances of voting due to total votes exceeding ballot papers issued to voters two two six eight two six. The aggregate of instances of voting due to the total voting exceeding ballot papers one five four five eight six. The aggregate of instances of overvoting. You see, overvoting running through all the instances is pure repetition. Pure repetition. This is a regurgitation of absolute irrelevance, something which is not relevant. Because you pick one issue, you change, the, you, you change the wording, give it a different figure, and came up to 1,244,000. This kind of thing definitely will not stand the test of t Mr. Test Kume, anywhere. Assuming without I am only that. Referring, I'm only referring to this because Baumia showed it. On, okay, on, but on I want to ask a question so on, 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 on that point of our voting. I'm what, saying, I'm, uh, what I'm saying My, my is question that, is, yes, Mr. Kumi, yes, yes. briefly, assuming without admitting that the only ground is over voting, isn't that enough? The fact that we've had over voting, we assuming that's true. We have not even established that. If, assuming <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we have not even established is, that. Isn't that well, enough go to, to challenge the validity of the Let's go to court, court and establish it. Mm. You know, ah, you are, so what is your point? Alleging that there's over voting, even in the petition which we have brought, you have not stated. Any over voting. It's only aggregate, so ah. so and so, total instance of voting. You are repeating the same thing. Look at this. Repetition. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The repetition of the same over voting where? And I am saying that if it is over voting, where was it done? And this is a very crafty way of deceiving the, uh, uh, the Ghanaian populace. Where do I say so? Everybody knows that mm. in every polling station. Mm. We have a number of voters, registered voters. Mm. Now, we have an idea about ballot papers issued, those which have been declared you know, valid and not valid. And at the police station, there, are, there is an open counting. 
there's a segregation of valid votes this way, invalid ones put this side. Then again, you know, it is also segregated as to which particular ballot papers go to this particular party or a parliamentary candidate. Then it is counted in the glare of everybody, not in my bedroom and not in yours. One, two, three, four, five, six, until the, uh, it's exhausted. In the presence of everybody, you understand me? Then it is signed. Where is the claim? Where would, if there's a claim of overvoting, immediately the totality is made. Your agent will be, be able to know that there's an overvoting because he's got access to the total number registered voting voters in the constituency. He knows what has been counted, he saw it, he took part, he heard it. He will make a comparison. So I'm saying that these are cook figures. I'm telling Ghanaians, these are cook figures. And, and what's they all the no basis? It is just to satisfy the whip they, you know, no, they, they're supposed to be into Mr. believing Kumbay, that. How, how do you come to that conclusion? I will, that not, have talk, I will, I will not have talked to this, but we have not ex exhibited it. I'm talking to this, and I'm even talking, saying that if it is an insert of our voting, look at the columns here, 13 columns. The issue of overvoting runs through every one of them with an, a figure. The first one was 226. Can 000. I make a little correction? No, no, no. Don't, let me finish. I'll, I'll, can I make a note? I'll, 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 I'll let you have your. You see, then I'll, I'll, I'll move to the second point. There's this claim of uh, irregularities, you know, taking place only in the stronghold of the NDC. I think. Please, I made it. So let me correct I you. Chris, that's is, not what I said. It, I think it is just No, no, no very that's not what I said. What I said say? the ones that we've identified here, the 1.34 million. I didn't say all over the country Trip. there were no irregularities outside of uh, uh, the president's oh, stronghold. Okay. So I'm saying that where these things come from, it is interesting that they happen to have happened in those. Uh, so so in if, you think, region, if you think, think there are irregularities in the Ashanti region, region but <laughs> so you no it's rather fair to also look at the other places. This is what stops you, you from, at from looking at. This is what I am saying markets. that. Ah, ah, you, cannot, you, cannot, you, cannot, you cannot just take my this side. Is what, let me How finish. About let, me finish let me finish. This is what I'm saying. It means that, that you're not even all these claims, analysis of these claims are evidence. fraudulent. You understand it? I'm saying that they are fraudulent. They cannot stand the test of time. To the extent that this has been bandied around and are put into the public domain, you understand? I'm speaking to it. If it has just been an issue, of being a component part of the petition being filed and argued in court, I will not say anything about it. You understand? But this is what Baumia put in the public domain, repeating the same over voting instance in the 13th. It's not the same. It's the same. Read, read, read it. I'll read it for you. Come here. Let read me show it. you. Now, but, let's but, let, but, let but, me move to, to let, another thing. I want to have more points. Let me have more points. Let me have more So come. We'll come around. We'll come around quickly. Come quickly. I, want, I want to wrap up yeah, quickly for me. Do you know why I cannot rely on the... And on the MPP. In a minute, quickly. After the election, they talk about rigging, and that there was massive rigging in the uh, strongholds of the NDC. Then they went on to say that figures which have been declared in the strong uh, by the EC are not figures which have arrived Who went from on the to region. Say? Who went on please, to say? Please, please. This is a document. No, who they, went on to say? Party. You said they went on to they say. Even, who went on to say? Oh, yeah, I heard the, uh, what's the name of you heard uh, who? their Sir John. scribe. Sir John. Sir John said it. Sir John said what? They specifically mentioned, uh, he mentioned Law Mania Krobo, that, you know, in that instance, the true figure obtained was 23,520. But then the EC declared 30,182. Evans, I think now, this, this is a discussion. We are no, talking about yesterday's me, press conference. I am, let me you finish. Are, I am bringing as many as you I gave you a minute. Yes, I, let I, me, I, let me add one minute too, so they can wrap up quickly. You see, you see, so we can move on. They stated actual figures. And then they went on to cook 30,000. But when you go to the website of the EC. Which keeps changing And then you look, you look at the figure <laughs> which have been used to compute the, 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 the result. It's 23,000. What document are you quoting from? What document are you quoting from? So you see, this is the habit. No, no. What document what is he quoting What document is he quoting from? I want to answer that question. What, what because document the question are you quoting from? I was coming from? to ask you. You have not seen this in No, I haven't. Because what it's not signed. It's not on any... Let's get serious. So if you can tell us what document is it? What document is it? You manufacture a document. What document is it? Describe... 
Sir John, Sir John. John. I, I'm asking where, you, where, who, who has signed this document? Okay. 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 Where did he refer to it? Okay. Who signed this Mr. document? Mr. Japan, it's your turn. It's very no, no, it's my turn. Japan. It's my turn, actually. Oh, I wanted to address a few issues. I'll come to you on the legal issues and the other. Bear with me. So, I, conclusively, I'm saying that what they said yesterday cannot be relied on. It's just total imagination, fabrication, manipulation. Concoction. Concussion. I, I think I think that for a, I don't that falsehood. I Nobody should take that seriously. I think I think as political parties and as elders of our nation, we have to lead by example. You can't come on, sit on television stations and talk like that without any basis. We have filed oh, a case. A in court. Allow him. It's a stand. We have filed a case in court, and you are a trained lawyer. It disappoints me when you speak like that. It really no, that's belies. Not fair. That's it's not fair. fair. Because it we have a case oh, in court. The man is here. Let him answer it. No, no, no. I mean, he's he's he he accusing us. He's saying that he's saying that he's fraudulent. I mean, please. He's made. I mean, he said. It's fair. Whether it's fair or not, please. Please. The listeners who are listening. You have had your time. I want him. I have said that this particular issue I was speaking to was put in the public domain yesterday. And I have this the same, I, I have the same. Because, so because when, when you were speaking, me that this is not when this you were speaking, the same document I'm not. That's what I'm responding to. Okay. But when, you when, have when, 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 when you were speaking to say, in the We are speaking so, to the people speak of Ghana. Speak to the issue, don't then, insult. I have not ins I'm not insulted you. You have insulted us. You have told us that we are presenting false documents. I came to you, you address the issues. Kindly make notes. You should make issues. You should talk about issues. You address the issues. First and foremost, in that somewhat, I haven't insulted you, please. I've disagreed with your conduct here because you are trying to mislead the people of Ghana, and that's a fact. These are documents we have given to the Supreme Court of Ghana. Signed. Signed documents. And these are duplicates of documents given to us by the Electoral Commission. It's not documents cooked by the MPP. So let's be clear and allow the Supreme Court to make a decision on that basis. You cannot sit here I and say that, that we have cooked, fixes. We have cooked, cooked it. Because how? It has gone how? 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 how can you say that? You are being unfair it's, to I think it's, it's when, totally when you're wrong. Wrong. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's wrong. And we have to be fair to each other. You can't use this forum to make irresponsible statement. We can't allow that. That is a document signed by the Electoral Commission given to us, and we are sending the duplicates to the court. Let's wait for the court to make a decision. And on the second point, he talks about overvoting, overvoting. Yes, it is our category one. We have different categories. If he cares to read the document <laughs> that he's holding, they have one, two, three, four, five different categories that we've talked about, that we explain to the people. Those who voted without biometric registration, which we find is, goes against the grain of the EC's own regulations. Again, having... Uh, polling stations that are cooked. Th these are ghost polling stations that do not exist, you know, and then missing the presiding officer's signature. That is serious. That is akin to Afarijan not signing this declaration. So when we say something like that, this is a party that is, in fact, the Ghanaian people should congratulate the MPP. And I, I'm waiting to see Forward whether the time. Electoral Commission can assemble their 26,000 polling station results. For our party to do so in just over a week, the logistical nightmare to bring in 24,000 plus polling station results. That, that, is, that is an improvement. It shows that we have a strong party machinery all over the country. And we should be credited for that. And we hope that the NDC can bring in their 26,000 so that we can put it side by side and let the court make a decision. That's you can't sit here and say that the Electoral Commission has different figures and then maybe theirs and the NDC are the same as what you I said earlier. You said okay. that. You know, and uh, this is a serious program, and I think that we should not sit down here and just make statements we think just on the altar of politics. We are trying to build our democracy, and we believe that the Electoral Commission has a duty. People are paid to declare results. Whether there is an agent or not, the people's will has to prevail. So the fact that agents have signed does not mean that people should be adding figures to it. No, but that's that, for that's, me, that's it's not I want, I want, I want to bring in Anna now. Oh, Anna, yeah. I, Respond to that issue because well, some I wanted to refute one last one. It is not true again. The propaganda that the Asante Hene refused to. No petition was presented. First of all, <laughs> the MP, MPP never said we're going to present any petition to Asante Hene. Oh, Asante Hene is not a politician. He is not part of the political yeah, arrangement. Everybody had please, it. please, please, please. Okay. Let's get serious. This kind of dirty politicking where you create your own falsehood. Mm. And on the basis of the falsehood that you've created, mm. I mean, referring but, to us as, at uh, what do you call it, in 2008, you had senior officials of your party who are ministers today standing on television telling people to come to 
to the electoral commission with cudgels and cutlasses and come and murder that, people. That, that's that's what they did. That's not okay, correct. I, I, I want to move on now to that. That is much worse. I want to move back to the issue that is you are discussing. Much worse than uh, bring us back on track. And or, 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 I want to bring in Nana now. Uh, there's, a, there's a point that I want us to consider also. Because yes. some have said, and uh, Mr. Japon just alluded to it, mm. that you had agents mm. throughout the chain mm. to the strong room at the mm. EC. Mm. And the suggestion is that they signed these documents. Mm. Mm -hmm. They were representing your interest, yeah. and they signed off these documents, yeah. although there were issues at yeah. that point. They signed off. That shows, even some members of your party have, have said, that you were not vigilant enough. Okay. Why blame anybody else? Okay. That's one. Also, add to your response, his point about uh, Article 57.5, yeah, okay. talking about the fact that the president <coughs> shall not, while in office, as president, be uh, personally liable to any civil criminal proceedings in court. His, his question is that, what do you want to achieve okay. by bringing the president? All right. First of all, on the issue of agents, the process, the process of the election begins at the polling station. Then it goes to the constituency collation center. Then it goes to the uh, district office, and then it comes to Afarijan. It comes to the strong room, yeah. and then goes to Afarijan. Okay. So Afarijan technically never sees the red sheets at the polling station. He never really sees the tally sheets at the coalition center. What he will see is the constituency summary that is sent to the strong room. But even he, when we met with him at the EC, in front of the Peace Council, he says that when things get to him and there is a mistake, they correct it. Haven't agents signed when he gets to him? Mm. Well, the agents have signed. Coalition agents have signed. But when he gets to him and he sees that there's a mistake, they correct it. Two, to suggest that uh, there were polling agents, the polling agents under the Constitution are not responsible for the conduct of the election. What about people like uh, um, um, Mr. Joy or Sayabwa, independent candidates, who we know can never have 26,000 or 52,000 polling agents across the place. They should be robbed because they don't have agents. In other countries, there are no agents. Though. It is that just the electoral officials who deal with the matter. Okay, But because in this our part of the world, we know that people will want to do things that they shouldn't do. They say, look, just to make sure that the process is fair, at least have your people there. But that is not a substitute. It is not a substitute for the EC doing the right thing. And I will say also, that what I have seen in this process, because honestly, I didn't know much about the electoral processes before. I can tell you that no matter the, your vigilance, if the EC is working against you, you will never win an election. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, what kind Again, of, uh, let, me t let me tell you another thing. I'll tell you something. Chris just mentioned that. Oh, but Chris, uh, listen to me carefully. I said, that if the, EC the way the process you. is, if, if the EC is working against you, you can never win an election in this country. I stand by that. Secondly, you, you yourself, you can I finish? Uh, allow him, allow him. Mr. Akume, Mr. Akume, you've what? been interrupting uh, a lot of the uh, submissions no, by... I, I, no, I don't. Uh, no, so he mentioned no, my no. name. He I, I want, mentioned my name. I want you to make, 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 the note. make the note of I'll, it. I'll tell you something we'll else. Come back. I'll tell you something else. We have an agent in Akan constituency, one of the polling stations in Akan constituency in the Volta region, who... Um, came to tell us that uh, at some point there was no verification being done. We took him through the blue, the red sheet, and saw that he had signed the red sheet. A question was asked to him that how come in this polling station Nana Kufadu got zero? He says he didn't get zero. He says, ah, we said, ah, but you have signed that he goes. He says, no, he didn't get zero. He got 65. So we asked him, so why did you sign the sheet? And he says, honestly, we had announced it. As Chris says, it's counted, it's announced. <laughs> so I signed without really paying attention to the, the figures. Now, if it is true that Nane Kufu had got 65 in that polling station, should we say that because the, the, the polling agent did not pay attention, it should be zero? Is that what we're saying? And under hearsay. Ms. Akume, again. <laughs> Is that what no, you're saying? Is, the point, Again, the point I'm like trying the to make. Time I'm saying that. The point I'm trying it's to make. Fair. The point I'm trying to make, Evans, is that, notwithstanding the presence of agents, the law requires that we have a credible election with integrity. That means that every vote must count. That means that the electoral commission, which is charged constitutionally.
to ensure that that is done, should ensure that that is done. And that is why even before the end of the process, if there are irregularities or malpractices that are brought to the attention of electoral officials, if they are acting properly, they should correct those things. If it happens that it is up after the declaration, the court will correct it. The issue of uh, polling agents is neither here nor there. If you are in your, uh, your house and you, you, your things get stolen, will the police tell you that because you had a security man, you shouldn't come and complain, they will not work on it? Just a few days ago, it was announced in the paper that the Deputy Minister of Information, Okuje Tua Blakwa, had 25,000 Ghana cities missing in his car. He had his driver arrested by the Nima police. Can we say that because Okuje Tua Blakwa was not vigilant, he should not have had his, he should just take it like that, they've stolen 25,000? Is that what we're saying? I don't think so. Reasonable minds in this country can never agree to the principle that because you had a polling station agent, if they've stolen from you or something, is a, or there's a clear mistake, they, it should be like, it should remain so. That is, that, is, that is one thing. Secondly, this business of MPP is just whipping up sentiments among their people that they are going to win the case. Who goes to court thinking they are going to lose? Who? Which lawyer in their right mind will advise the client that, you know, this case you are going to lose, but let's go. No, you have Certainly, a duty to excuse also me, please don't come and interrupt and me. Tell please, please. Your client. And, and we have told our client, and we have told our client, and we have told our client that we have a up. strong case, and that is why we are filed. It is not for you to sit here with your thinking. You think that we have, we have no case. That is your, you're entitled to that view. And you have you're entitled case. to that view. Third, there is no three truths in parliament, uh, in court, there is only one. There are not is. three that, truths. That is there is only one were, truth. No, there's three. That is the problem with some that of these people. Your, that is they believe your that there are three truths. You have just told your, your, your clients. There are people. You've just told your supporters. Please, please, please. That what you are gathering is the truth. Can no, I have the truth? So that's the Mr. first Maliba, truth. Mr. Maliba, I saw yes. you yes. under the pen. I thought you were going to make it. Yes. Because I cite this quietly. is something you're responding. Cite here quietly. So at the end of the day, I told the point, I made a point. At the end of the day, the judge's truth. Supersedes. Okay, so what are you talking about? You, and that is the truth. Point. What are you talking about? Make, that make, is make the truth. So not truth. You go to court with it. <laughs> I also Maliba, go. Make, didn't you tell your clients that on. you don't make, go make, to court telling them that they will lose? Make the I note. Not go, so you are telling lies? Make the note. Make the note. Please yeah, don't so, refer. Okay. To, don't say those things to me. I mean, really. Uh, lies and things like that. You can, you can make your point without, you know, using that sort of language. Please. Now, on the issue of verification, there is some claim being made that... The laws must be interpreted to enhance the electoral process. We must ask ourselves, just what is biometric verification? Some say it is not identification. I say it is. If you read the law, eh, the other forms of identification are put in a permissive sort of uh, way. Where is my case? Is your, your case 31. It's here, it's here. Yes. It says clearly in 30, uh, uh, what is it? Yes, uh, 30, 30, 30, yes. It says, a presiding officer may, may, it doesn't have to, before delivering a ballot to a person who is to vote at the election, require the person to produce a voter identification card or any other evidence determined by the commission in order to establish by fingerprint or facial recognition that the person to, uh, uh, that the person, there's some typo here, to the registered voter identification number in particulars appear in the register. Mm -hmm. That's may. Then it says, in bold, to emphasize the, the critical nature of this, that the voter shall go through a biometric verification process of voting, okay? Now, just what is that? The Constitution says that you can only vote if you're a citizen of Ghana, if you are over 18 years, and so on and so forth. These qualifications are captured by registration. It's sort of like a human right and a civil right, you see? Even in our constitution, it says that those inalienable rights that you are born with, that God gave you, the right to free speech, and so on and so forth, there can be time, manner, and place restrictions placed on them. So, for example, you cannot go and tell the EC that I'm, I'm 18 years old, and I am, uh, I'm, 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 I'm eligible to vote, so register me. No. It is the EC who will make the regulations as to when we will register and when we will vote. You cannot say that I want to vote, EC. I have a right to vote, so I want to vote. No. Those are time manner and place restrictions, which are accepted in all civilized countries. Now, your right to vote is a, is a constitutional right. It tells what qualifications you must have to vote. We have determined that the best way to assure those qualifications and to verify, to verify those qualifications is by biometric verification. So if you say that 
without biometric verification. Mm -hmm. You cannot, because for example, I'll give you a typical example. Somebody comes to your local polling station. Everybody in the community knows him. Oh, that's uh, Kwame Japan. He lives over here. I mean, he's, he was born here. He went to school here. We all know him. He should vote. Now, without biometric verification, we don't even know if he's actually registered to vote, because that is a condition. You must be registered to vote. The fact that there's facial recognition and you are from the community doesn't entitle you to come and take a ballot and vote. What if he has a voter ID card? I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not addressing that. I'm saying. On the, because the law says facial recognition is also... Uh, mm. Now, we have determined that the best way to ensure that you meet the constitutional criteria to vote is by a biometric registration. And so that is why the law says that one, you cannot do away with it. You must do it. Otherwise, you cannot vote. And Afarijan himself, interpreting the law himself, as he understood it, said so, that if you are not verified, you cannot vote. And so we had thousands of people in this country who were denied the right to vote simply because they could not be verified. So why should others, on a principle of equal treatment for persons similarly situated, which our Constitution also guarantees, I am saying that it would be a constitutional violation to say that some people can vote without biometric verification, but others cannot, because the Constitution ensures that we are all treated equally when we are similarly situated, OK? It is very simple. I don't believe that this claim that the, there is a constitutional right to vote as a, enshrined or, or, or declared in, in certain cases can trump this particular requirement. So that is what I'll say about that. Now, whether or not the president can sue, but I've already said, point. Don't worry. I've already said that, as far as I'm concerned, it is not true that the president can never be sued. Because under Article 57 itself, that has been quoted, it says very clearly, I uh, beg your pardon. 57.5? No, wait. Uh, 57, 57. Yes, OK. 57, 57 uh, uh, 4. Mm. Without prejudice to the provisions of Article 2 of this Constitution, and subject to the operation of the prerogative rates. So it means that when it comes to Article 2 matters, and when it comes to the prerogative rates, this provision does not apply. Then it goes on to say, the president shall not, while in office, be liable to proceedings in any court, etc. Now that is in the performance of his functions as a president. Then the, pre the president, but you know the president doesn't just live every day doing things presidential. He also does things which are not presidential, even though he is president. You follow? OK. In so fact, In fact, he's said to be on a private visit. Yes. So now the president shall not, five, while in office as president, be personally liable to any civil or criminal proceedings in court. Then you have CI 74, which says clearly that a respondent in, to a petition challenging the validity of the election of the president includes the person whose election is being challenged. The point he's making is that I'm coming. That I'm coming. That is for, that is, to the that constitution. Is his point. And, therefore it's and I'll tell you, and when it gets to the court, we will all make arguments on that matter. Because you see, all of the authorities that we've seen, for example, the Nigerian cases, the president is always a part of it. If you look at the British authorities, for example, they say very clearly that where the person whose election is being challenged is not made a respondent, the petition cannot move forward. There is a reason why. They are the ultimate beneficiary of, of the election result. They have an interest in the matter. He is being sued as candidate of a particular, in a, in a particular election. And I think that for all of the reasons, again, let's flip it the other way. If the president were the person who was aggrieved in this matter, yeah? yeah. He's rather saying that somebody has been elected or declared uh, elected by the EC whose election he wants to challenge. Are we saying the president cannot sue under CI-74? Is that what we're saying? When he, he, it is he who was in the election, uh, a candidate in the election himself? All said and done, these are issues that will be determined at the Supreme Court. Mm. That's a it's point. very simple. Yes. And I the Supreme Court. I want to bring yeah, in Mr. I, I, I just want to stay. On, yes, I want. I just want to stay on the law. They talk about um, Regulation 30 of of CI 75. 
But you see, it should be read together with Revelation 31 and 2. Now, he has read Revelation 31. Mm. It says that the presiding officer may, before the delivery of a ballot paper to a person who is to vote at the election, require the person to produce. So if you are to vote, it is at the discretion of the presiding officer. He may require you to produce this. That is, if, you are, if he decides to do so, then you can go ahead to vote. That's what he's saying. No. He may require no. you to vote. No, 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 no wait. Allow him to why? Be. Go to Pre the presiding to officer watch. may before <laughs> delivering a ballot place. paper to a person who is to vote, who is to vote mm -hmm. at an election, require the person to produce this. So if you produce this, don't you go ahead to vote. Now, two. Go to B. B. Or any other evidence, any other evidence. That, that, that the EC could then. Or then the two. Social recognition. Now the two is what they are hanging on. The voter shall go through a biometric verification. And shall is shall wait, stronger. Wait, it's obligated. wait, wait. You are jumping the gun. My argument is not along those lines. This provision did not say that you cannot vote if you are not verified. If they intended to say that you cannot vote <laughs> if you are not verified, they would have added it here. Hey. You get a point. Uh, so I think that <laughs> it is disingenuous <laughs> on the part of those who want to interpret the law. Afar is not a judge. Who is Afar Are you a judge? Oh. If Afar is not a judge, are you a judge? He's not a judge. Are you a judge? He is not a judge. You are interpreting a judge. He is not a judge. By the parties at the ASAC meeting. Yes. It is not a law. It is not a law who says that there is no verification. There is nothing here. 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 There are other places. Persuasive authority Evans. that, uh, that I, says I, that I, I when that happens, it is gone. But see, he's talking about persuasive authorities. But he knows that we are not bound by persuasive authorities. What are you talking about? We are not bound by persuasive authorities. What are you authorities. talking about? Do you, you, did you hear me? Did you hear me? I'm right? saying that you talked about did you, persuasive authorities. Did you hear me? Well? But our courts are not did bound you by you it. Well? So if, our courts will not go by it. If there is an authority, that says that. How do you know your authority? We have authority. Are you on the court? No, we have authorities here. Are you on the court? We have authorities here which our courts rely on. They will not take persuasive authority. Oh, are you determining the, the direction well, of the Supreme Court? Yeah, you said that you, you will win your case, and that you were going to court, you know you will win your case. How would, I, are you how would they matter? Win? So, 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 <laughs> so, so if, that, I, if I may ask, if I may yeah. ask, just before, if this the, is what you want. Yeah, well, if, 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 <laughs> if the, if the <laughs> framers, <laughs> those who intended this legislation, <laughs> meant that if you were not verified, you won't vote, they would have included it. They weren't sleeping when they got here. They were not sleeping. What is the meaning of the shot? No, if if uh, it, no, 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 no. if, if the biometric verification is obligatory, mm -hmm. and you, you you've not gone through good, the process, what happens? I'll tell you. I'll tell because you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The shall here is this: It's possible you could have a recalcitrant person who will get to the uh, the uh, station, the police station, and say, "Ah, for me, I don't want my hands to go through this machine." This is so speculative. You, you get my funny. point. That is what the shell is supposed to mean. No, it means where you don't the, want where, to vote. Where the machine is available, <laughs> it means you and don't they want say to you should go through, and you say you won't go through. That's what the shell is Look, meaning. Let, but the shell doesn't mean that if you Evans. don't go through, Evans. 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 this must be told. I'll, I'll give you time. This must be told, that. and I need to let them understand that if the framers, you come, you come in. Yes, you give more time to our case. But I want to more time to our case. So the framers of this revelation would have included that. If there was no verification, you won't vote. And I've made it abundantly I'm clear here that they were not sleeping when they got here. Evans. Neither they were, were they tired. I, I don't Evans. think. Evans. You see, I'm correct. You, you see, see Evans. It's very no, interesting. I, 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 it's very interesting. It has the floor. Why are you going to have the floor? So, so, so you interjected me. Let me just make it On this point, on this point, on this point, I beg you, two seconds, on this point. Would you allow him? I want him to say, wait, 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 Evans. Evans. I am making, I just want to draw his attention to one. Maybe he can, maybe he can respond for all of us. He says. But when we come to you, I'll come to you for the final point. No, I want him to address it. He says that the people were not sleeping when they put that provision in. When they and were that, there, they didn't put that provision in. That's that if they, if they wanted to, they would have put it yes. in. The people who made this law, mm -hmm. were they sleeping about the issue of whether the president could be sued? And yet they put Where it in that here. Coming from? And yet they put it in here. Where is that, that coming from? Uh, the, the, the person who's, uh, who's validity, uh, whose election is being challenged should be a respondent. Were yes. they sleeping? Let me respond to that. Please. <laughs> if they were wide awake, 
Uh, they were still, they were still <laughs> if they were white, I wait as you are claiming. <laughs> if they were white, I wait as you are claiming. And they inserted that provision there. And it goes against the spirit of this constitution. Yeah. What do you think the Supreme Court will do? It was uh, So it has nothing to do with sleeping. It has nothing to do with sleep. It has nothing to do with sleep. I'm making a good point. I'm making a point. I'm making a point. I'm making a point. I'm making a You cannot bring a red herring to confuse me. I disagree to be confused by you. The point is that. The point is simple and clear. So you want to move on? the other points that you know Indeed, I'm just staying on this matter. I mm. don't think that there's any matter I want to. I just want to tell them that mm. the non-verification, no vote, was a misplaced statement. By and who? that by whoever, you, those who sat in the IPAC meeting. No, the, nobody the, sat in IPAC meeting. The, 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 the provision here does not state that if you have not been verified, you that can't is vote. why it must be interpreted so, by the court. So, you, so and the court why. would the interpret court this provision already. In the right, court right, this has yes. never come up. Yes, they've done that. That's what you say. This has never come up. Some of this is this has never come up to applaud. The NDC for going to court. The MPP. The MPP for oh, going they to have court. a right to go because to court. Because it will enrich our democracy. And yes. that brings me to, the, to, the, to my next point. Then no, we, we are wrapping up. Here. I, I just wanted to make it point. Okay. In certain parts of this country, mm. elections for the first time had to go into a second day. Mm. The election had to be adjourned because of this verification. Yes. So how can you talk like that? that the was. election had to be adjourned, had to be stopped because the machines were not working. So that they will be fixed for the next so day, the for it to continue. Compliant. So that the law will ah, be complied. Then you are claiming in your suit here. Yeah, but in other places, in other some pla places, people voted without yes, verification. Yes, yes. And how does that offend the law? That's the point I'm making. And I'm saying that the law, if it intended to exclude those people, would have made it explicitly mm. clear. You are not the one who drafted the law to start that. with. So you see so now. And you are not the one who's going to interpret the law. The fact of the matter is, it says the voter shall go through. It says shall. It's obligatory. To the extent that the Electoral Commission issued a statement and on the people, night of the election don't put that in elections should be adjourned and continue the next day to allow biometric verification. It is to not go there through. for nothing. It's okay. not there for nothing. Let me sum up. Let me sum up. It's not there for nothing. And Nana knows that. No, there no, are I some, may not know what kind of law. You may not know. You may not know my kind of law. But this is the kind of law that you know. Please, oh. In some cases. What kind of law? No, no. In some cases. So how do you determine somebody who has voted without verification is registered to vote? In some cases, in interpretation, a shall could be directory. In other words, it is not mandatory. No, it's not always that a shall Look, it's we are, mandatory. We are, not, we are not lost okay, to now, 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 the law. We are moving. We are yes, moving okay. into so the law. We are not here to be a room by law. The subject of the law we are discussing. So, so we are here having a panel discussion. This shall is the of He is not here as a lecturer, and we are not here as students of law. Clearly, this is what the law says. It was emphatic enough for the electoral commission to, to issue a statement and to adjourn the elections till the next day. Thankfully, the Supreme Court will have its final yeah, say so on please. So I'll leave it. They I'll cannot, leave it at that. They cannot. Yeah. You will not sit wanna, here. Take, you are not a shot. member of the Supreme Court. Wanna, wanna, and then make your own briefly. judgment on that I want to take a short break. When we return, I'll start with you. No, we haven't. We are. But you're listening to News here on the Multi TV channel, but also listening to us, watching us here on the Multi TV channel, but listen to us on Joy 99.7 FM. We'll return. On return, we'll ask the question as we wrap up. Uh, what does this mean for our democracy? And what should be the posture of the other uh, democratic actors uh, to the court case, the, uh, and the MPPs pursuing in court? Uh, should they be interested in helping the process, or uh, should the political parties, the EC, the executive, say basically this is much ado about nothing? We'll look at that when we return. The bigger question, what does this mean for our democracy going forward? Entrenching it, enhancing it, or basically pulling us all back? We'll return with that analysis shortly. Twenty minutes past eleven here on News Far. You're listening to us on Joy ninety nine point seven FM. Watching us on your multi TV on the news channel. Uh, some of you have been sending uh, your Facebook comments on the subject we've been looking at here on News Far. I want to share some with with you. Uh, Samuel Edu says, "How many doctors do the NDC party have in their party?" Uh, when you say doctors, I mean you're talking about not uh, medical doctors. You're talking about uh, uh, academics, I guess. Uh, well. Send explanation if you have it. Uh, give us some more what you meant by that. Uh, Sa Samuel again says, uh, good calculation, good in calculation than doctors. Okay, you sent it. Well, that's what you mean. People who understand the figures, I guess. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Philip <laughs> says, when bones are mentioned, it is old ladies who shiver. I'm struggling to understand what NDC uh, problem is. They keep saying the MPP have confused, have refused to go to court and make a noise. Now the MPP has filed the writ with the Supreme Court and they are still shivering. Uh, in Debila Nuhu says, the MPP is not only fighting the EC for their defeat in the 2012 elections, but soon they will attack the Supreme Court for throwing away their petition on the basis of its merit. Ah, uh, look. Humphrey says, MPP said they are fighting uh, the MPP have said that. Uh, on behalf of the 24 the million Ghanaians. I'm also a Ghanaian among those 24 million people. I'm telling MPP they should take me out. Mm -hmm. uh, Abdul says, honestly, I'm proud to be associated with the NPP alongside Governor Japan and the Nasan Tibidito. They are very competent, but um, Chris, the uh, said about him is well. I, oh, I don't, say, I don't, say, I don't, say, I don't say, get. I don't get what he's saying. That uh, a ready, bit of typo ready, there. Ready. Uh, Adi says NDC and MPP no, must note that figures what? don't so, lie. Yeah. Uh, Adam says Evans. I'm not a lawyer <laughs> and I have not studied law, but I bet you if MPP pick, uh, MPP will be defeated. He says. Uh, also, okay. Osman MPP says MPP. Evans. According to the EC, there are about twenty six thousand polling stations countrywide. The MPP is also claiming about. 208,000 uh, two, no, uh, no, plus no, no. He presiding that. officers did not sign the uh, pink the, sheet. The is, vote, that, the vote. is that not a contradiction in there, he's asking? Can I, can I correct that? People don't understand that because I've had a few calls. Hmm. That there are 26,000 polling stations and then we are talking about missing presiding officer signature on receipts amounts to 208,000 votes. Okay. We are saying that those polling stations where the presiding officer did not sign, the total votes cast. When you put it all together for the eight candidates, it comes to 208,523. Okay, Osman. That's all we are saying. We are not saying 26,000 polling stations. Osman, so that's your about uh, that's clarification for you. Uh, Mick says, uh, Nana Asanti Bedeto, a creation of good nature and sound nature. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea myself. Anyway, uh, uh, Isahaku says, Why is NDC afraid of the case? Chris should not behave like what he did in the Wyoming case. Yeah, uh, crazy Joseph crazy. says, today, Chris, uh, well, what did you do in the Wyoming case? Uh, uh, Abdul Karim says, Evans, your uh, platform today really exposed NDC legal team. Mr. Kume and his team will get the embarrassment of their lives, uh, of their lifetime when the case finally goes to court. Uh, so those are some of your uh, comments on uh, Facebook. Okay. And you can send more. I'll share it with the rest of the world. Uh, on this business yeah, of uh, the Supreme Evans, Court, um, let, let me I just make, let, let me just Briefly make one minute, yeah. because it's a stand. Because I think it's very important that this thing, this propaganda that's going around, that the NPP is going to start attacking the Supreme Court. Nobody in their right mind will take a petition to somebody to look at and then attack that person. The NPP, I have heard Nana Dudanko Ekufuado and Jacob Echebilam to say on separate occasions that they will accept the verdict of the Supreme Court. We haven't heard that from people from the other side. And I think that is no amount of propaganda that somebody is going to attack the Supreme Court is going to work. Because that is where the MPP is taking their story, taking their case. It, it is wrong. But okay. indeed, Let me Nana Kufado also indicated that he was going to accept the verdict of the EC. But what are we seeing today? So those cannot be statements that we can rely on. Let's, let's move on now. I, uh, I want to move the yeah, discussion uh, on. Uh, Mr. Kume. Yes, uh, uh, I, I want to finish up with the... Uh, in wrapping up, I want to consider the question, what does this mean for our democracy? Some say this really is an opportunity to enhance our electoral system, which is really uh, the, at the heart of any democracy. It's supposed and to the enhance... And the posture of the, of the various democratic actors towards to it. Any challenge to an electoral process, should, that is it, there's cause for the challenge should enhance or deepen the democratic process of the country. But when the challenge is based on frivolity, <laughs> you know, that is why I have the problem. You see, I'm saying this because you can see that right from the beginning, they keep on shifting ground from rigging to irregularity. And the If you remember, they've asked their supporters to stay at the various police stations from the time of voting to counting to declaration. So they were there in their numbers to support their agents. And if you cannot trust your agents who have done this job for you, have appended their signature to the resource sheet, and you are going to court, and they're the same agents you are coming to put in the witness box because they were, the, they were the people you put there. I mean, do they look at the problem, the top task that is ahead of them? So, so I just want to get a, a clear point on this. Yes. 
In, in response to my question, you're saying that it will draw us back. It's not going to enhance our democracy. No, I'm saying that it will enhance. Okay. Deeper the deeper. If it is, there's something mer meritorious in the challenge, but when it borders on in, on frivolity, the frivolous nature of this, like this instance we are having, that is why I think that it's just a waste of everybody's time because it shall not and can never come to any good. I'm saying this because evidence is very important. The people, your polling agents all over the country are the ones who are coming to attest whether the figures collected from their various police stations are the figures they have signed up to. They are the ones whose credibility ah, you are not attacking. That's what that is. Are you, are you, are you, please, are you, 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 is that what they are coming? He's coming to have I said ask so? court. Have I said so? Oh, you said it. I was that using it to address. No, I was using it to address the issue attend. of polling agents. That's is all. that what they are coming to do? do in court? Well, why don't you wait? Is that what they are coming <laughs> to do? In court? Why? I am why don't saying you that. Wait? You see, I don't want to rely, <laughs> and I cannot rely, and I don't trust the MPP because you know it has no, got no. a very massive, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, machinery for deceiving. The public. I'm saying this because hey, right office. from the beginning, they were talking about rigging. Rigging. Then they put this document in the public domain. When this was deflected, because when they realized that people can go and check, and the, the EC has come to confirm that the figures which they are put at actual are the same figures which have been used, which have been used in computing, then they have not come with uh, issues of uh, uh, over voting. And my brother, those who signed this document, did they take the time to even read the document, the petition before signing? To democracy. I've even exposed the arithmetical problem that they, they have. And that's just an instance. And it goes through, you know, the show, petition. Show us where. You understand? It goes through where. Show and us. they are talking about show us, show us, of instance of... That's a point you've made before. Yes. And now I think why are you you're repeating, repeating that point. Why you repeating that point? The basis of the aggregate so, of voting it's what has given them 1.3 million. That's not true. Okay, you that's, that, that's fine. I think, I think that's the point we've addressed. How can you just in the lie past, in, in the past many hours? Lie in peace, me come to aggregate the lie, you know, to give it a kind of, you know. Uh, so I, I, mean, I, was, ho I was hoping in specific no. reference to the question I asked, because that's that's the note on which I want no, us to end. No, I want us to go to court, mm -hmm. and I want, I don't have any problem with the president being cited as a, as a party. I know in law, you see, when a cause of action accrues in favor of you, it must accrue against somebody. Somebody must have done something, you know, to warrant your dragging him to court. And, you know, the, the, the cause of action accrued to you must be, you know, uh, dissected from the averments or the pleadings in your, uh, in your writ of summer. So it is true that reading this, I have seen that there's no... Uh, cause of action against the president. Because nowhere have they stated that the president has done this and that and that to, you know, to bend the quill of justice and then, you know, reap from the, uh, what do you call it, the so-called alleged rigging. There's nothing. But then I sincerely think that the president must be advised to go to court and then to, to, to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Even if there's no reason for him to go to court because this does not... So th that's him. one key actor. Yeah. There, there are at least two If I'm advising... I want to move on yeah. the discussion quickly. Yeah, yeah. There's also the EC, and then there are the other political EC, parties we as well. Cannot, we cannot, what, we what should be the approach towards, I, towards cannot, the case? I cannot speak for the EC. Mm. But, I, but the other parties as well? I, 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 can, who also I, can, I can tell you for it's sure... That, you see, <laughs> I, I can tell you for sure that if a document is facts. Mm, the original document remains. You understand? So this claim that a document which have been filed from the original office of the EC passes somewhere. Where is that in the petition? Oh, it's here. It's here. Where? It's in the petition. Which part of the petition? I, I don't want to go through the petition. Because because I've read the petition it's, it's, and there's nothing in oh, the there. There's they nothing like they that. Mention, they mention the, what do you call it? They mention even the... Uh, the, 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 the name the of the company. They mentioned the name of the company. 
Petitioners say, however, that on 8th December, while provisional results of ballots cast, a police station had been declared and voting was still underway in some policy. It came to the notice of some members of the public. They did not even mention the name mm. of the, the office of Superlock Technologies, a security installation and information, oh, was okay. receiving the results of the elections before transmitting same to mm. the second. And, and a point it, is here. And, and, point point, is, and the point is that, and I know that the that point I'm saying that, that, that I'm is. wondering whether in this day, people <laughs> are you know, assuming that there's a technology so that when you fast something from one end, and somebody is. hijacks it and, there is. and they changes it. That. And there is. Okay. That. So oh. that would be proven to people. Yeah, have to so you see that. how tall their, uh, their tax is. And then, let me tell you something. Chris, if you are ignorant creepy. about technology no. matters, no, if this, this is what I've been fast for from the regional office, the original states, do you understand me? So they have to prove that this is the original. This is what gets to the uh, EC's office and it's been changed. They have a very tall... I don't see how... They want Ghanaians to believe that the results, as alleged in uh, paragraph 8 of the petition, that results from the regional office go through Superlock, Superlock <laughs> changes it, before you see how they okay. keep on changing. No, no. How can you rely on? Let me. I, I want to bring in. No, no, no. How can you rely no, no. on this petition that he can succeed? No, no. In wrapping up, address the question I've, I've been asking him about really? what, what, what this means for democracy, really? but also key. Uh, there are several actors in this. What should be their posture towards the case that is currently before okay. the court? Yeah. He says I'll, I'll, he wants the secretary to take. Uh, you have. You have okay. five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, I just, want to, I just want to use just one minute to deal with this uh, business of superlock. First yeah. of all, it is an incontrovertible fact, and every single IT person who is knowledgeable will tell you that you can, in fact, uh, hijack, if you like. <laughs> you can hijack fax uh, uh, messages that are particularly uh, fax over IP type of messages and do whatever you want with them before, and you wouldn't even know. It's the same as, you know how sometimes you can get a call from abroad, but it doesn't tell you it's coming from abroad. The number is local. It's a local number. Yeah. There are all these technologies out there. And you can, the legend will not change. It will still tell you it's coming from the regional office. In any event, the point that was being made here is that the story being told here was that this was going on at the offices of STL, mm -hmm. that one of our leading members of the party, Mr. Safamafo, and some officials went there. They were told that... This, they STL themselves, it's not the MPP making the allegation, the STL themselves were saying, telling them what they were doing, and that they had been contracted by the EC to do so. Mm. The EC mm. came out to deny. First of all, the EC, per, or Safo, Safo Kantanka, said it was true. Then later on, uh, through Afarijan, see, said it was... not here. Oh. You see? The EC is is, 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 it, is, it a is it a fact? We are talking about what EC has said, and they are not here. Allow him to make the point. Make the point. That you can you can you can rebut. So want to get you. so so uh, EC are free to send a text if that's not the case. Then Afarijan then denied uh, the, the the claim. Now the point MPP is making here is that this was a secret arrangement <laughs> to the extent that none of the other political parties knew that. The EC had this STL people doing this activity, which STL themselves, live on TV. Activity. It was character. Oh, my friend. It was on TV. The whole thing, when the guy was talking, we all saw it on TV. Mm. That this is what they were doing. Safu Kantanka confirmed it, and then later on, it was denied through uh, Afarijan. Okay? That is all that point is. Now, um, I also want to make a small point about this verification thing. Section 34 of the law regarding the public elections law, CI 75, says that. If the let me let me just quickly get get it so that uh, there is no uh, yeah about it. Uh -huh, Thirty-four. Where the proceedings oh, are oh, interrupted at the polling station are interrupted or obstructed by B the breakdown of equipment. The presiding officer shall, in consultation with the returning officer and subject to the approval of the commission, adjourn the proceedings to the following day. Two, if the returning officer is satisfied that as a result of an occurrence under sub-regulation one, that is, the breakdown of a machine, it is or will be impossible or impracticable for proceedings which have been adjourned to be continued on the day to which it has been adjourned, the returning officer shall, with the approval of the commission, further adjourn the proceedings for not more than seven days. My point is that the issue of verification is at the heart of the election. You will see that prior to this new CI-75, there was CI-15. But because the election, the character of elections in Ghana had now changed,
because of the introduction of biometric registration and biometric verification. They needed to amend the law. And that is how come CI-75 came. And I'm saying that this uh, verification issue is at the heart of the election. And that is why the, the, it, the, the, the people being verified is expressed in mandatory terms. And that is why where the equipment to be used to verify, breakdown, the, the, the poll is suspended to the next day, or even if uh, not practicable, for seven days, because people must be verified. And I remain uh, committed to the view that some people cannot vote without verification, and then some people denied the vote because they were not verified. Okay? And now in this situation, uh, Mr. Amaliba was making the point that under uh, Tain Adi and Apalu, the vote, your constitutional right to vote is so sacrosanct that you cannot use technology or ID cards to deny somebody the vote. And I'm saying that here we are. Some people voted without verification. Some people vote, were not allowed to vote. So the Supreme Court must now determine which people were not allowed to vote. So what? We, they go and vote again? Or what? That is why CI-75 is there. And it tells you clearly the circumstances under which you will exercise your constitutional right to vote. Now, on this issue of democracy, yeah. the New Patriotic Party and its presidential candidate especially has a history of making interventions in our uh, society which enhances democracy. There is no doubt about it. From, in fact, it is true that every single advancement in the electoral process that we have seen, from transparent ballot boxes to the provision of ID cards and all of those things, were at the instigation of the NPP. Nana talked about it just today. Sometimes, I'm yes. wondering whether it's wholly true. It is. Sometimes they had to go to court. They had to go to court to get those things done. Okay? Again, where they didn't go to court, a lot of the malpractices, and I think Kamil Japan was part of it, he can speak more to that. A lot of the malpractices and irregularities captured in the 1992 book, The Stolen Verdict, led to changes. Because sometimes it is not just through the courts, but when you also talk to uh, people, the stakeholders, the EC, the donor uh, countries that fund part of our elections and so on, they bring pressure to bear and changes are made. Nobody can deny that about the NPP. And so I think this one is merely another step in that process. And that is why Ekufuado and the NPP have said that this is not necessarily about the MPP or Ekufuado's presidential ambitions, but that really and truly, whichever way this case goes, it would have been another step in pushing the frontiers of our democracy forward. And, and I think that it would be useful, how should we say, comforting for the rest of Ghanaians if the president, who is also now a party to the suit, can make the same uh, uh, commitment. commitment that, look, um, this is a good thing. Uh, because after all, I I'm surprised today that um, Chris is somehow d disparaging some of this stuff and, you know, this is not fit to go to the Supreme Court. Afari Jan, it was Afari Jan who told us that if we have a problem, we should do what? Go to, go to court. court. And, okay. and, and that's, I want to bring in... Uh, no, no, oh, my, my, my five minutes now. Okay. Just one small point. Chris, <laughs> it's up. It's been up for <laughs> a while. One minute. Chris, Chris, Chris made a... <laughs> I want to clear point. this. It's very yeah. important. Chris okay. said that the whole petition is about overvotes. It is not true. And I'm going to demonstrate to you why the MPP's job. Quickly, one minute. Yes. Because oh, it's one, it's 30, 30 seconds, crap. It has, has done a fantastic job. Well. You see, aggregate, there's aggregate instances of overvoting due to total ballots, uh, uh, votes exceeding ballot mm -hmm. papers issued. There's an amount. Mm -hmm. There's aggregate instances of overvoting over due, due to total votes exceeding <laughs> ballot papers issued. They have, you see, uh, if read you scrutinize the thing, the aggregate of. So, no, wait, let me explain to you, Chris. On some sheets, eh, if you take a red sheet, the only irregularity there may be uh, overvoting because the ballots, the votes in the box exceeded the ballot papers issued. But you may have a red sheet that also has, it, it has that problem. It doesn't have the presiding uh, member signature. It has um, uh, uh, no biometric verification. Those three irregularities are all present. Those are categorized differently. That is why you have 23 uh, uh, instances no, no. captured sorry, sorry, of, the types, of the types of the types to count the ballot papers in the various buses okay, okay, now, the now, to now we are digressing. What's that? Did you go to physically now count we are the digressing? I want to come back to the that issues question. I asked. Do you, know why? Do you know why I'm surprised you're asking me why? that question? You, are just, you just told the public that why? our agents were there, so we should accept the paper. Why didn't you so say that we should go to it? 
Why don't you accept it? Is it? The, it is the paper to that is telling the story. that there's over voting, okay. you must show that what is in the box is, it is more than what is there. I think the point now has been made. That's not the case. Nana, thank you. Thank I want, you I want to, I want to bring in uh, Mr. Jukon now. So you must have uh, an understanding. In addition to the, to the subject about democracy, I just want to read a quote from Nana yesterday. So shouldn't he says, be speaking? No, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with the man. Why? Don't worry. <laughs> no, I mean, he spoke first and I spoke. Then he spoke and Kamala should speak. I, unfortunately, unfortunately as, as, as moderator <laughs> and uh, the EC will oh, do. Well, he decides. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> but Nana said yesterday that the justices of the Supreme Court will take up their responsibilities. And by the time they make their pronouncements, we expect that Ghana will be will be a stronger and a more credible democracy. What would you say to those who suggest that statements like that are it's it's, it's nothing more than a facade? That the only objective is for him to basically be pronounced by the Supreme Court as a only legitimate winner of the elections and become president. And all this talk about improving democracy and fighting on behalf of all the all Ghanaians is nothing that more that than a smoke screen. Contest. You see, first and foremost, I think the Constitution is very clear on how a president is elected. It says 50 plus one of the valid votes. And we are telling you the valid votes should exclude the 1.34 million, according to the categorization we've shown here. OK? What is important? I don't, people can go about trying to attack the person of Nanado. They can do so for what they want to do. But you can never erase his contribution to the development of democracy in our country, however hard they try. And it's sometimes it's shameless. And I don't know what they will, they will try to achieve by that. Not only, even the media station that we are sitting here today, people have forgotten. It didn't come by chance. Once upon a time, there was only GTV and GBC. People had to go into the streets, the Kumi Prekos, the Radio Eye, and Nanado was the bulwark of that struggle. So today, we can sit here and enjoy press freedom. So his contribution to the legal profession, I'm sure they know. Someone who has trained many lawyers who sit in the Supreme Court, attorney generals, and other, his contribution to our society is only in Ghana that some people can belittle all that just because of politics. Again, if you have a different political position, mm -hmm. have that. But Nanado's contribution to this country, both in the legal profession and in our political development, is unmatched. When people were hiding in the ivory towers of Lagos, he was fighting military dictatorship <laughs> in, against the, the Champon regime. This is a fact. Of the, so we cannot take that away from him. And so his credentials. And a party in government, you lose by the skin of your teeth. And the man goes and says, look, as a politician, he will take the high with the low. He expected to win. It hasn't happened. But he doesn't want a pint of Ghanaian blood to be spilled on our streets. Mm. And uh, people still want to try and create him as a violent figure. That, for me, is just pure propaganda. Are you sure? Yes. So this talk about party people amassing and all that. Oh. If this has happened to the NDC, hmm. this country would have, up, would have been up in flames. <laughs> in 2008, they were prepared to do anything. And you saw it in the African elections film. When they said, meet us in the streets, they were going on radio stations, telling people to amass with cudgels and sticks over an election. So for me, what is happening now is very instructive. Very instructive because it will stop the impudence of electoral officials writing things and changing the will of the people. And also cement the primary responsibility of the electoral commission. Yes, some of us fought for party agents to be part of this process. Yes, it is true, Chris. But it does not take the primary responsibility of running the election from the Electoral Commission. In any case, Afra John announced the result without MPP's presence, without our signing of about 100 of the sheets. But he went ahead and, and announced it. Because and, and in fact, in the law, it says that your polling agent not signing does not make the not, result yeah. invalid. He went ahead and, and signed it. So for me, the critical thing, I am beginning to even wonder whether the Electoral Commission as it exists currently should be so configured. Mm. After 20 years, we have to take a look at it because yes. we know the antecedents of the Electoral Commission from the National Commission of Democracy. Which okay. aspects do you think that needs to change? I think, first and foremost, that parties should have representation. As commissioners. On, on the commission. Yeah. Of course, so that we can all have a critical look at what happens. There's been a lot of gerrymandering with the, with the constituencies, but that's another matter we'll, we'll talk about at a later date. You know, so this court case is standing on solid legs. And you are talking about overvoting. Yes. Why do we do ballot accounting if overvoting is not necessary? 
Have you seen the, the blue sheet? There's something called ballot accounting. Statement of poll. Yep. It is done because those things have to be checked. Otherwise, we don't need so to. Where do did it. you get your figures from? That's the point I'm making. The figures were gotten from the sheets and they have been sent to the electoral commission. Is it not the uh, to same the, the Supreme which Court? From which the collation was done, it sent to oh, the. Oh, uh, oh, that means you don't understand the, the process. Thing? Then you don't understand no, the process. I mean, I think Look, there are many instances. Let me tell you something. Uh, Chris, yes. Chris, there are many instances when they are bringing in polling station results yeah. to the collation center. They play tricks. First and foremost, Maybe your agent doesn't even have a calculator there. And the, the results are coming in. The EC, that's the compilation. They'll be reading out the figures. He may be compiling it right. So you have confidence in him that he's compiling it right. At the end of it, when he does his cumulative figure, if he's added 2,000, how would you know? The if candidate you is Let always there with you. Something, something happened in 2000. So what happened to Abdullah Shafi? The candidate look, is always there. The something, candidate is always there. Look, something so happened. your candidates were there. Oh. I mean, this figure, why, you know, when you are given the opportunity to talk, you didn't say all why? This Please. Please. <laughs> Look, in 2000, something happened. The fact that some of us did not bring it out is because we didn't want confusion in the country. And Afarajan is there if he wants to challenge me and tell me that this does not happen, or Akumia, who's in charge of IT, say that it does not happen. Anytime in any election, at the end of the election, before they declare, and we did this from 1996, we send our computers, and I have the template still on this computer. I go to him, we call the NDC representative, the two main parties. That time it was Captain Sou, late Captain Squadron Leader Sou. And then we'll bring the Electoral Commission computer here. We say we want to just cross check through the, the regional summaries. Because even when you are doing the input, you are a human being, you can make mistakes. So we cross check and be sure that what you are declaring is the right one. In 2000, they had short landed us in Ashanti region by 130,000 votes. Because they had rewritten the program to add up only up to 31 instead of 39. This is a fact. That's right. That is why I said, you better change that thing. If we go out and talk about it, there will be confusion in this country. And that's how come, although we had four more constituencies to, to declare, we said, okay, we can load it into the template, 100% turnout, 100% for males. It will still not change the figure. So that's why he was able to declare. It was 2004. So 2004. You understand? So these things do happen. Even the compilation, this time round, we were about to go and do the compilation. You say you uh, agree. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, he agreed that he'll give us 45 minutes, myself and uh, Rojo. Rojo turned it down and said, Tony Edu. But in all the confusion of the meeting with the uh, Peace Council, they just went ahead and declared they, they, it. Look, since then, I've seen what the Electoral Commission has completed. Website. And we haven't even talked about it. On the website. On the <laughs> website. Changes. They have increased the voters' register mm -hmm. that they gave to everybody, which we have on the template. By 127,000. Nobody, they haven't explained to us why. But it is on their website and it's here on the computer. I could show it to you. Even the template that they used to use, which was easy to look at, and you see the, the, the summaries, has been changed. They're using some very strange template. It's difficult for you to contemplate what is going on. So I think that the Electoral Commission, it is a human institution. They are not superhuman, they are not God. Yes, it has to be independent. But the time has come for all political actors to find out what exactly goes on in the Electoral Commission. We cannot leave it to some select people and they hide in the room and decide for the rest of our country. We cannot do that. Because it's very clear they've been very incompetent in the way they've handled this election. Yeah, Take Accra, right. for instance. Even the allocation of ballot materials in Greater Accra, 11 o'clock in certain places, when the headquarters is here. It's extremely strange. And in many elections, 496, Collect Clote were the headquarters of the, normally is about one of the last uh, constituencies to be declared. All sorts of funny things go on in this election. It is time for the people of Ghana to let the Electoral Commission know that their duty is to be the neutral arbiter to report the people's will. And not that it's how crafty you are and how intelligent <laughs> you are to, to add figures. And that if you don't have your agents there and they have signed, and so that is it. That position for me is not a position that we should, we, should, we should even entertain. It should not prevail in this society. And if we want to build our country, we should build the Electoral Commission to the point where even if there are no agents, we know these are credible people who report the supreme will of the people. Because we are talking about people's mandate. Mm. That's all. I want to bring him, Mr. Mandela. Yes, you, yes. you believe this yes. process will take us closer Indeed, to before, the, those reforms? Before I get there, you see, it is this same incompetent EC that declared elections on behalf of the MPP in 2000. At that time, they were so much efficient and effective Nobody said that. that there was no problem from the MPP Who side. Who said that we said there was no problem? In 2004, 
the same incompetent EC. He just no, he just showed. I think he just made no, no, the no, problem. No, I'm <laughs> saying that the <laughs> point is that did they go to court? They, they will to never, court. never feel aggrieved when the elections are declared in their favor. Who tells you that? But and in 2000 and 2004, they kept they we, we over were it. aggrieved I, 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 in I, I, many instances. Kovna, Kovna is, we were aggrieved. Is, if you is, don't is, know, Kovna was the one who was in the strong room in 2004. On the TV stations, we all saw what happened there when some results came in through Kobna on two occasions. How can you say that? We saw that. 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 We saw that is mischievous on the part of the MPP. I think that, look, Sorry. if the MPP is going to court based on substance, then it will enrich our democracy. But from where I sit, there's simply no substance in their petition. They claim that this action by them is to benefit or inure to the benefit of the generality of the people of Ghana, when indeed, it is to benefit their supporters and they themselves. Ghanaians don't feel aggrieved. Indeed, ever since the elections were declared, Makola women are going to market. Taxi drivers are driving. <laughs> uh, Total drivers are going to work. You come here, they are calling for an Egypt style, what's the name of that square? Tahiri Square. In Egypt, people were not called with mobile phones to go to Tahiri Square. It was spontaneous. Oh, you think so? People are Clearly, you don't even know what happened in Egypt. You, no, you have no idea. You, you have no idea what happened. No, no, no. no, 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 no. It was spontaneous. No, but allow him. Allow him. Allow him to make. But I was going to make the point though. But ultimately, they've decided to go to court. I mean, that that phase is is really over. They have gone to court, and what I think is that, like they say, that it is only when a frog dies. That you know is full length, is what will happen to the MPP. Indeed, I'm ex I'm, I, 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 I wish well, that at the end of the day, if their noses are bruised, they won't come back saying that something has gone wrong in the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Because at every stage of this electoral process, something has gone wrong. 45 new districts, it will bring chaos in this country. Every move, it will bring chaos in this country. Why? Who was the first person I think that to try and contest this I election? I think that the MPP... I want him to wrap up. Have you forgotten the, the press conference MPP, that the NDC had see, in the first the day? The MPP has a certain strength. Mm. They don't know it. If I were them, I won't be wasting time in court. If you can use two regions and get five million, <laughs> it means that you only need to concentrate on one additional region. And you will meet... Victors but that election. is such a wrong analysis. You don't waste your time. Two regions gave five court. million. Two regions gave five million. How? And somebody Indeed. said somebody Indeed. Indeed. Like, Indeed. <laughs> two what regions. they don't know is that in 2000 and 2004, ah. President Kufu won in more than two regions. That's how come he was declared. You want to use two regions and become president of this country when somebody has won in eight regions? This kind of spurious argument. This is a very spurious okay. argument. They should understand. For, for a learned brother, yeah. so yeah. I'm amazed. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so back, I will so back, not, back, back I will not the allow you to attack that me. That's before, that's before. No, 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 Ghana, Ghana, Ghana is a unified state. You see, Mr. Okay, I think 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 I think
The question is, is that you want in two rooms or not? No, it's not true that you want. We want it. It is not true. It is not true. One and a half is for now. For now, it is not true. It is not true that we want in two regions. Nana, it is not true. Hold on, Nana, hold on, Nana, hold on, Nana, hold on, no, Nana, hold on. Because there is no such thing as regions when it comes to the hard say on the issues, and then we can wrap up because all of us have had our final say. When the when the results come to the east, it doesn't come by region. Just just the final say. It comes by constituency. I want you. I want you to address this. Because it's a lie. It is a lie. It is a lie about this. That I felt uncomfortable. Why? But okay. I didn't address. Address. address that's a digression. Address the issue to about. Attack me and insult me. Address the issue. Nobody has insulted me. I can go that way. Let me say your argument. Address the issue. Address the issue. So the point is this. Point is this. It means you are making an excuse. What do you make about the suggestion to reform? That's all. Suggestions to reform the system that Mr. Japan, for example, put out. For example, including. Political rep, rep, reps on the uh, no 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 on the as for the Kara. reform of the electoral commission mm. we are all out for it and indeed I started my submission by saying that these are policy issues and do not need the Supreme Court to come into it these are not matters of law I indicated that to you and I said that look if anything can be done to enrich our electoral processes we are all out for it indeed. So, so we, basically, you we, back this. Do, do you know you that in some countries well? they vote with pebbles? Oh God! You know that this is, this is 2012. <laughs> you know that some countries they vote with You're pebbles. You're telling me. Okay, in Gambia they vote with pebbles. In 2012, so you want but us to vote I'm with pebbles? I'm not saying that. That is not the <laughs> logic. I'm saying that oh we have come a long way, haven't we? Come you know yes, of course. We have come a long way, and we can only but improve. So, out for reforms in the electoral in the electoral commission, I'm all out for it. But this frivolous petition coming from the MPP, will fall like a pack of cars in the Supreme Court. Okay, we'll see. Um, the verdict will be pronounced by the Supreme Court judges. Ultimately, that's all that matters. Uh, none of what we say here will matter. It's what the NPP is able to prove in court that will matter. And on that note, we draw the curtains on news file uh, today. Uh, just before we go, uh, you've been listening to uh, Mr. Kwabene Japon, who is a member of the NPP. Uh, also, you've been listening to Nasan Tibede, who is a legal practitioner. Uh, Chris Akume, NDC uh, legal team. And uh, Abraham Amaleba, who is also a member of the NDC legal team. Uh, I've been aided in making sure that the show is live uh, on radio and on TV uh, by Kofi Ansah, who is the uh, producer in chief, also Yaya. Abu Bakar, I call him the Commander-in-Chief, and the rest of the technical team, Aaron Na, Solomon, Joe Saki, uh, Joseph Logosu, uh, Benjamin Yako, and Isaac. You want to join us again next week, Saturday. We'll look at issues. We'll, hopefully by then, maybe, the case will be in court finally, and we'll get to hear all the evidence that uh, Mr. Kume and uh, Mr. Maliba have been asking for. Thank you very much. <laughs>